three, two, one. has won the Super 8 Massachusetts State Championship. You are looking live at Pierce Field in Arlington as we are on the campus of Arlington High School for tonight's evening edition of the annual Turkey Gobble Gobble Day Classic. Tonight, Arlington takes on Arlington Catholic one last time. Scott Zwick, Rob Anthony, and Max Cohen here to wish you and yours a happy Thanksgiving. Gobble Gobble. Rob, uh, I'm alongside my professor. Uh, I'm alongside the professor. Rob Anthony, Pars, happy Thanksgiving. It's the last matchup between these two in-town rivals, and we expect the usual Battle of the Bulge. Happy Thanksgiving to you, Scott, and all the people who are watching today on Thanksgiving Day and after. Uh, it's going to be a good night. We look forward all year long to this uh, rivalry game, and uh, the Spy Ponders last year took a uh, – all-time 6-5 lead in the rivalry game, having won the last three. They'll look to extend that tonight. The Spy Ponders come into the game 4-6 and six on the year. Uh, had a little bit of a tough time in conference in the Liberty Division. Uh, went 1-4, and four, but outside the Liberty Division have had great success uh, going, um, uh, what would it be, 3-2. and two. The uh, Arlington Catholic Cougars on the other hand have had a, had a rough year. They've uh, wins and losses wise coming into the contest one and eight their lone win coming against Mystic Valley Regional uh, and that was by a, a score of 43 to nothing and Rob as we see the the, the clubs getting ready and and, and preparing for the uh, the the turkey because we have a little bit, uh, we, we have a unique scenario where this is the first time we've ever played this game the night before Thanksgiving, and that's quite a, quite a unique scenario. It is a unique scenario, Scott. Audio check. It's a unique scenario, Scott. We're playing at 6 o'clock. It's 35 degrees at game time. It's going to be down to 30 uh, tonight before the contest is over. Have you played tomorrow, which is Thanksgiving? We're expecting a balmy 16 degrees at 10 a.m. So this game, along with many others in New England, was moved up uh, up to up to Wednesday night. Uh, interesting to see how the players will respond. Players heard about this after 7 p.m. last night when it was finally confirmed by both teams. If you're a player, that's an unusual circumstance. Uh, see if it has any impact. It'll be, it really will be interesting to see if it if it does have any impact as you know you mentioned Rob uh, or we've mentioned a lot in past broadcasts uh, athletes but especially football players are creatures of habit and not only is this a change in what the plan was for the week it's a it's an abrupt change and a change that happened with some uncertainty last night. Yeah, I mean, think think about it. So it's it's uh, Tuesday night, and you're looking forward to the annual, uh, you know, kind of Turkey Day Classic Thursday morning. Aunt Beth is flying in tomorrow night, come in to watch the game, coming in from Nebraska, and uh, you're going to go to school. You're going to meet Aunt Beth at the airport. You're going to, uh, you know, have one last time with the with the boys at, at, in a brief practice, and you're going to go play Thursday. And all of a sudden, you hear that, you know, Aunt Beth, sorry, I'm not going to be seeing you at the airport. We're going to be we're going to be playing ball. It, it's it's uh, got to be a little unsettling. It, it, unsettling, and I would have to think that the team that kind of 
gets off to a fast start or is able to keep discipline early on might have an advantage. Uh, yeah, I would think so. And it's it's uh, it's cold and it's a little bit windy out there. So not only do we have the uncertainty of the game, we have uh, some elements. I see both teams w- warming up. The uh, all the receivers are wearing gloves. Um, you know, wind is whipping around. It'll be co- cold, so the ball will be hard. And uh, I, I would expect that r- the running game could be especially important in, in tonight's contest. It certainly will be important, and we're lucky to have with us, us tonight out from from the, the, the warm, cozy studio back at Studio B where uh, our man Max Cohen did a wonderful job uh, uh, in studio for last game. Um, I, actually, we're having a little bit of uh, audio issues with Max. We have Max down there. We see he's he's on field level, so hopefully we're going to get in touch with with, with him for uh, kind of get a flavor, the feel for the weather and and down on the field. But my 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 my, my question, Rob, is um, is you know, we talked to to, to uh, Bowler after I believe it was two was it two years ago one of the super super cold game when Bowler you talked to Bowler on field level right, and right. he mentioned after the game one of the most fascinating post game interview uh, answers where he said that I believe it was that his his hands were literally numb he said they were numb he had trouble feeling the ball myself. yeah it, it, that's it, that's interesting and it's going to be just as cold if not colder right it snowed actually a little bit just before game time so uh it you know the ball is cold the ball is hard if you think about it if you if you let it get into your head the ball will kind of hurt you a little bit on the snap um i think the quarterback play is going to be important and what the quarterback's going to have to do or just is just you know compete right uh you know get into that zone get into that flow where it's all about the football game and it's not about you know any any other distraction is including the elements certainly this game is going to be about the seniors in general on both clubs but we we, we have a special senior we've mentioned adam bowler and adam bowler is a, a, a rare bird these days he's a three-year starter he's he's had success he started off uh on a team that struggled at arlington high there, there were some high expectations this year. They got off to a slow start, but they've battled back since. And it's been Bowler that's led them. Yeah, B- Bowler's had a fantastic year. He's done, you know, he's done it all. He's led the team. You know, we talked to Coach Jenrin between the games, and one of the things that we asked Coach Jenrin is why he plays Adam Bowler on defense. And Coach Jenrin gave an amazing uh, answer, which is he wants Adam Bowler out there, and you recall this, Scott, to set the tone and to essentially lead the other players and remind the other players what kind of focus and effort they need to exert when on the football field. I thought that was one of the highest compliments I've ever seen a coach pay a player X's and O's wise and execution wise. And I did not feel in any way, shape or form that it was a knock on his other players. It was a praise of Bowler and how hard he plays. And it brings to mind the times we've seen Bowler step onto the field in defense, and we didn't notice that he stepped on. But literally, the the, the play he's on here, he is flying into the ball with reckless abandoning and making a big hit. Yeah, it adds atmosphere. You can feel it as another player uh, in 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 football. And what I'm reminded of is is the feeling of playing basketball when there is. Uh, Uh, you know a power forward who's doing a lot of rebounding and playing you know kind of tough defense and creating that atmosphere and setting the tone and uh, you can feel it in football too and that's one of the little intangibles that adam bowler brings so the 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 spy ponders will be be facing a a a a feisty and tough uh, arlington catholic team led by first year coach anthony petrellis the, the, the Cougars have struggled a little bit this year, but it's it's kind of almost a, a mirror of two teams in uh, 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 Coach Petrellis' uh, the power of positivity. He's He's got his guys up and energized, and even though maybe it hasn't resulted in wins, it certainly resulted in improvement. Well, it, you know, it has, Scott, and again, the, the 
Uh, Cougars punctuated the year with a feel-good 43-0 win on October 26th. And, um, you know, I think Co Coach Petrellis feels good about his team's uh, effort and progress over the year. If not, uh, if not the record, certainly a little bit of a, a, a little bit of a rebuilding year. But you know, this is a rivalry game, and we've talked about it before. When rivals score off, you can throw records out the window. This is there are a lot of t a lot of players, and we'll count them up. A lot of players from Arlington on this Arlington Catholic roster. A lot of these players grew up together. They have something to prove. Uh, they realize this is the last time they're going to be playing together on this on this Pierce Field, and uh, no, you know, no, nobody's going to be waving the white flag before this sucker's played. Well, certainly no one's going to be waving the right flag, and not only that, Rob. You know, there 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 has been some some little incidents here and there there's a flavor of a rivalry that's that's uh, that that's taken a little bit of a flavor off the field too do, do you sense that that emotions could run high tonight well the last few games that the spy potters have played uh, certainly have been chippy and that that's uh, become a trademark of this uh, the f football team they get their they get their, their hits in um which is uh, what you want to do on a football field. They play with effort. They play with intensity. I don't, uh, we haven't covered Arlington Catholic this year. I don't know uh, what they're like, but, th uh, but they better be ready for it because Arlington Catholic, Arlington will come to play. They sure will, and we know it, it, uh, of years past in this rival, we, we, rivalry, excuse me, I sound a little bit like Daffy Duck there, <laughs> but we've seen with this rival. We, we've seen we've seen Teppers get a little bit heated, and we've seen uh, uh, players and sometimes even coaches for a moment or two, uh, you know, lo lose a little bit of mental focus. And in a game like this, sometimes the team that keeps mental focus for the longest can oftentimes come out on top. No, no question about it. And uh, we, what, what was it last year or the year before where we saw a little extracurriculars and the coaches had to go on the field and kind of break it up? And it was it was it? Uh, I think two, it was two years ago. Was it two yeah, years ago? Uh, but there was there, uh, you know, and I'm I'm I, I'm a, I'm a power positive guy, Rob. You know that as a, as yeah. as you know, my wife can sometimes call me saccharin. And uh, but you know, I, I got to be honest. There has been at least an incident. Every single year since I can remember, you know, uh, a personal foul that, you know, a few people, you know, took a little a bit of palm to. Uh, we mentioned the, 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 the incident where where there was uh, um, an altercation and coaches went in as peacemakers and and, you know, it got a little bit out of hand. I'm, that, you know, that was very, very unfortunate. Uh, but that's the, the kind of things that are going to happen when, you know, as you mentioned, Rob, these are in town rivals these are kids a lot of them have grown up together they know each other they it, it becomes very personal it, you know it does and uh, you know the other the other thing about this game tonight this marks the the first year of coach Petralis and this marks the uh, first time we haven't seen coach Serge, Serge Clivia on the football field and uh, you know, you and I have both in the past expressed a fondness for Serge Clivio. The mark of a Serge Clivio team is a is a very creative, multi-dimensional offense, very aggressive style defense. Uh, we haven't seen the Cougars this year. I've, it'll be interesting to see, what, you know, what the look of this Cougars I team is. We talked to Coach Petralis before the year, and he was still kind of figuring out what the strengths of the football team were going to be. And uh, it'll be interesting to see if we see that kind of thinking man's approach that Serge uh, Clivio brought to the field or something else. I, I believe uh, the, 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 way, the way things were shaping up to be and, and the, kind of the, 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 the word on the street with, with the, the Cougars is, is that there's, it, it's a kind of a, a, a mix of the old and the new. Coach, Coach uh, Jenner was mentioning that in, in the interviews last night that uh, maybe a little less creativity, but the same amount of like uh, of foundation of effort and maybe a little more defense oriented. Hmm, defense oriented. So uh, we'll see. I mean, they're 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 certainly going to be tested by uh, Adam Adam Bowler. Adam Bowler tonight, and we started the broadcast talking about Adam Bowler, and uh, this will be his last game after being a three-year starter on uh, the Arlington 
on on Pierce Field, and uh, I know he liked to get in the end zone uh, early and often, and uh, the the Cougar defense looks to test that. And this is this is the the last game for the seniors. We'll, we'll mention that uh, quite often tonight, and for kind of the theme of the season and it, it con- continued by the interview last night with coach Gendron has been uh, I- improvement and positivity despite the the overall record we d- we've discussed the many ways that you can measure improvement other than the win loss record and so with with, with one game with, with, with one game left with one game left in the in in the season for these seniors this is their super bowl this is the final game this is this is their their last chance this is their their showcase to show to themselves show to the opponent and show to their friends and family how much they've improved and how much they've gotten better over the season and for their careers. Yes. And <laughs> excuse me, Scott. And uh, I was watching, uh, you know, as we were talking about that, I was watching the, the crowd fill into the stands. And it uh, looks like even on a, on a cold night, we're going to get some fans here to support, uh, support the teams. Um, and speaking of interviews, you uh, last night interviewed some players. And we are getting ready uh, but you know, back in studio to cue that up and uh, show it to uh, to the fans. You know, I, I, I'm really excited about it. Uh, of 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 all the interviews that that I that I've done with with players over the year uh, years, I was really happy to 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 take the themes that 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 we've used. Over the years of positivity and leadership, and really hear the players uh, uh, repeat on that. So uh, l- let's see what they had to say. Yeah. Easy. You're me nervous. Adam, I'm going to start with you. Uh, you know, we hear so much about your positivity, and coach has been telling us how you've been staying positive all year long. How do you stay positive? How do you bring that energy every single day? You know, it's definitely a good point. We faced a little bit of adversity this year, but I think it's it's so clear that when I'm able to stay positive, that others around me are able to feed off that energy, and that's the case with everyone here. Like, they'll tell you too, if. Like if one person gets negative, it'll just bring down the whole team. But I think we've done a good job at feeding off of each other in terms of energy. You, you sure have. It's been a, a season where you really kind of turned the tide, and you know we see the energy out there. Peter, you bring more energy than anyone on the team that, that I can see out there flying around, kind of crazy out there. Tell me, you know, where does that energy come from? You know, is there a competitiveness in your family that you draw from? Yeah. Well. Um... As you might know, my whole family has come through the Arlington High football program. Um, so I guess football and the competitive uh, mind might go in my blood, but I'd like to say that I think I make my own competitiveness. Uh, and uh, I, I think for me, what drives me is uh, trying to just get a good team win, and that drives me to be even more competitive than most. Do you, do, you, do you bring that energy every, every day in practice? Is it important to bring the same energy in practice as games? Definitely, yeah. you, you got to treat everything like a game situation because you don't want to be loafing it in practice, and then that turns into sloppy habits. Sloppy so. habits. Uh, certainly, uh, Scott, we know you don't have uh, too many sloppy habits. We've seen you down in the trenches all year long. Tell us what it's like Every game, every day, every practice, battling down there in the trenches. What happens down there? Um, every day, it's it's a battle. No matter what, it's practice, games. It's a battle. Um, my O line, my D line, we all just work hard every day in practice, in games, and we just work to be the best that we can. So, as a leader, what are the things that 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 you think? Uh, uh, you like to bring as a leader uh, of this team? Um, I think I definitely want the whole team to bring heart 
to the to the field whenever practice or a game the team needs to bring heart and that's the way you win football games you you you, you might play against people who have more talent than you but if you have more heart then uh, I think you got a good shot and that's what I try to bring out in my teammates outstanding Adam tell me a little bit you know what would you say you've learned from the game of football I would say something I've learned a lot is, is trust. And it's, it's gained the second the season ends, whether it's with community service or, with it, or whether it's with um, team lifts over the summer. Uh, especially offense is a lot about trust, whether it's on the coaching part of it or me as a quarterback. It's, it's whether I can trust my team and this year, I think, especially since we've all been playing together for so long, that the trust has, like the trust that we've all had in each other, has just carried us. Skyler, what would you say you you've learned from the game of football, specifically with this season? Um, with football, it's definitely dedication. You got to be dedicated. Uh, ever since I was seven, when I started out in Pop Warner, I I was a little overweight to start, so like I had to be dedicated, had to work to lose that weight, and once I did, I made uh, great plays. So, oh, so, go ahead, so, well actually, so the dedication, and, and, and would you say that, that a confidence comes with that with football? Most definitely. Um, football is a lot about confidence. You, you gotta be confident on the field, or else you just, won't be able to make plays. Peter, what do you think your, your emotions are going to be as you head into the big game, running onto that field? <laughs> running onto that field, you don't really, you don't hear anything else. You just, you're dialed in, it's, it's tunnel vision, and uh, you're just focused on hunting some cougars on that day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Outstanding. Gentlemen, thanks a lot for joining us, and good luck on Thursday, and bang! Bang, boom. Gobble, gobble. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back right after this. And we're back. As Peter Roach said, he's hunting some cougar. We're going to take a, a moment to honor America with our national anthem. to play some football, bing, bang, boom. Ed Angela Caggiano gets us off to a raucous start with an absolutely phenomenal rendering of our wonderful national anthem. If that doesn't get you psyched up, partner, I don't know what does. That was a tremendous version of the Woo! national Woo! anthem. A Angela, that, that could have been the, played at, the, at uh, Foxborough. On no, Sunday. No doubt. Uh, visions of Whitney Houston's version at, I believe, was the 88 Super Bowl. And so as we got a moment here, we're going to kick it down to Max Cohen. Max, what's the flavor down the, the field, the temperature and the, uh, 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 of the players and the, the air? 
pick a flavor, I'd pick ice cream because it sure is icy down here. But the players, they're just as pumped up as ever. I think they have more energy than every other game this year. Now that makes sense. Their last time facing Ironson Catholic before Thanksgiving. A uh, special game here tonight. And they're going to come out with a win and come out on top for the last time. It's a historic matchup. Absolutely. So for the last time on Thanksgiving, Arlington High and Arlington Catholic will do battle and back to receive for the Spy Ponders is, I believe that is, let's see, Peter Roach. Yeah, Peter Roach is back there like he always is. And Tyler Callahan. And Tyler Callahan, uh, the professor with the bird's eye. And it takes a bounce. Callahan picks it up. He fiddles and diddles. Zigs and zags and zooms over the 25 to about the 26. And that's where senior captain number 10, all league Adam Bowler, takes over. Good return by Callahan that time. He didn't didn't get the ball immediately. It looked like it might be one of those plays where the uh, but where the kick coverage team might overrun the play and create a lane, but Callahan couldn't quite s spring that. No, and uh, competent coverage there by the Cougars. So first and ten for the Spy Ponders who wear their away uniforms. It's been standard practice for the teams to alternate home and away teams' uh, uh, jerseys, even though this is game is being played on the campus of Arlington High. And so on first down, Bowler – Keeps the ball, does al does allow the, f makes the first player miss like he always did, but then a pack of angry Cougars comes in to make the tackle, and Arlington's uh, Catholic looks stout. They look stout, and there were six of them got their hats on the ball that time. So if the Ponders are hunting uh, Cougar, the Cougars are saying, "What is a Ponder?" Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that on that time, it was a uh, that that play was a a misguided football player. So. Second and 11 for the Spy Ponders. They are in that uh, pistol formation that they like, a uh, little pitch, and it's tipped at the line of scrimmage that time uh, by, oh boy, that's by uh, Griffin Carroll, and right off the bat, uh, the, the, the Cougars remain stout. So uh, Arlington C Catholic looks to have some real height on the defensive line. Uh, Gr uh, Gr Griffin Carroll, 6'3". Um, number 83, Frank, Frank Cancellari is 6'4". That can prevent, uh, present a challenge for Alan, uh, Adam Bowler to simply see over the line, and that time it was batted down at the line of scrimmage. So that brings up a third and 11. This is down in distance. Even... Uh, Bowler and all the success he's had has struggled with and the spy ponders are forced to take a timeout early and Rob I, I think that I don't know about you but the, you know the, the six hats on the ball first play of the game I, I don't know if there was a message being sent but I kind of got it this is, this is a Catholic team came to play tonight yeah, no question about it. They're they're very excited. They had a very uh, kind of spirited, uh, spirited warm up, and you know we often see that, but it seemed like they brought a little extra spirit to that. And uh, in this first this first possession, they've had a couple of nice defensive stops. They sure have, and the Spy Ponders have gone backwards after their first three plays. It'll be third and eleven as Bowler will take a deep drop back. It looks like a quarterback draw. He zigs, can't zag, and zoom. And again, three, four, five, six, seven, then eight players surround him and take him down. And the spy ponders go nowhere in their first possession. And you counted three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's exactly what happened. There were three guys on bowler by the time he was down. Then you got five guys, and three guys kept on coming to the ball even after bowler was down. Um, game on. Game on is right as... The one and eight Cougars say we're here to play football as well. And for the Spy Ponders, it will be uh, a good punt. And that is picked up and zigging and zagging and zooming is... Steven DeLeo and the Cougars will take over first and 10 at the 42. 
I'm really impressed by the by the height of this uh, Cougar team. Saw uh, Joe Creaney on that ball, a 6'3", 235 pound uh, senior as well. So they've you know they've got some good size on the Cougar team. That's really been a hallmark of the Cougar clubs over the years as they've they've not necessarily had deep teams, but they've had big, strong players and. This year is no different. So on first down, it's out of the, it looks like a little traditional uh, shotgun formation. Schmidt goes goes into the line and the what's good for the goose is good for the, the gander as the spy ponders remain stout. So we've seen uh, four plays so far in this football game and for a total of a negative three yards. Defense is king early on here as Jeff Aurelius takes a snap, a little pitch, and a little catch that time. And there goes Steven DeLeo to the 10-5, and the Catholic Cougars strike first. Gobble, gobble. Wow, 60-yard play to DeLeo just as we are, are proclaiming it a defensive struggle. A little screen play breaks it to the outside and outruns the defense. Steven DeLeo, let's see it again. Holy gosh, that was quite a quite a play, and I got to say, a little bit of a shock. And DeLeo hit the outside, put the afterburners on, and he was gone. Outstanding pitch and catch for the Cougars, and they take a 6 nothing lead and look to tack on uh, a seventh as Joe Greeny will attempt a little bit of motion on an extra point. I've seen that. It's a fake. It's a fake and stumbling and bumbling and mumbling over the right hand side goes Sam McGreeny and it is no good as a little bit trickery, a little bit of tomfoolery doesn't go the way Coach Petrellis had wanted it. But with 8.15 left in the first quarter, a 6 nothing lead is exactly what Petrellis and the young Cougars wanted as first start. Absolutely, wow. It, it looked like uh, just a little, uh, a little bubble, was it a little bubble screen? Was yeah. DeLeo in yeah. the slot? What, what's called the bubble screen to the slot receiver and uh, the, the punters were were sucked up, I think, looking for the run and DeLeo got to the outside and uh, outrun three or, f three or four three or four punters. So we said coming into the game, throw records out the window. Throw records out the window, folks. Six nothing Cougars. Six nothing Cougars and, and Rob, you know, that, that play is, is, is a stark reminder that the game of football sometimes is as simple as pitching, catching, and running. He caught the ball. It was a race to a point on the football field for the tackle. The receiver run the, won the race, and it's six points. So uh, as, as complicated as we like to make this game sometimes, a lot of it comes down to just pitching, catching, and running. So 6 nothing, and the Spy Ponders are a little bit stunned here as they muff the... Uh, whoa, it's a, a big tackle there by Shumway, Robert Shumway, and Shumway just absolutely ripped Tyler Callahan to the ground. The ground caused the fumble, so that was not a fumble, but right now, the Cougars don't own, own, only remain stout, they remain angry. <laughs> angry, angry, feisty. Whatever, let's come up with some new adjectives. Tyler Callahan came up and uh, was limping a little bit after this, and we'll see if the spy pawners can uh, gain their composure and do what they do. The Cougars are on the prowl. First and 10 for the spy ponders. Let's see if they try to get something going on the ground. And they do, they do what they've done all year long when they like to get, get something going. They go to the outside that time with Peter Roach, but he's going nowhere. And the Cougars r remain stout, angry, and effective on defense. Yeah, the, Coach Gendron dials up the jet sweep to no avail. So uh, as of as of this moment on, on uh, four plays from scrimmage, the Swipe Hunters have a negative five yards. This is... Uh, uh, an outstanding, effective, and inspired effort 
by the Catholic Cougars as they have come to play on Turkey Day. Happy Thanksgiving to you and yours the day before as Bowl on a rollout, a little pitch, and it's picked off. This time, Joe Greenwood gets it. He's got some daylight looking to get to the outside. He's zigging and zagging, can't zoom, but the damage is done. Joe Greenwood picks it off, and the Cougars are in business again. Well, wow, big play by Greenwood is we have a flag uh, on, on the play. Let's see if uh, maybe Max picked up what that is. I think it could be. I think it's a block in the back, guys. A block in the back block on the return. So that'll put the Cougars back. But what a play What a play by Greenwood is a play action play. And I think McGivaray and Bowler were not on the same page there. McGivaray was going up up, up field like it was going to be a deep, a deep ball. And... Uh, Bowler threw it to spot a spot where really only the defender sat. It's it's it's, it's really a microcosm just, of the it, the poor start for the spy partners. We haven't seen Bowler and receivers uh, miscommunicate much all year, especially late in the year, and we certainly haven't seen Bowler. Uh, Make, make passes where the defender had a better chance to catch it, catch in his own receiver. We've seen tip balls get intercepted, but this is certainly not a strong start for Adam Bowler. Well, well, ball security has been a strength of the spy punters on the season. Bad time to see a interception rear its ugly head. So first down and a little underhand pass. If I saw that correctly, holy cow! Throughout this, yeah. the, the, we said, well, we better have that. Re re Replay. I believe he threw that underhand. That was a little sideways sling by Riley Donovan. Riley Donovan cutting underhand, little sideways sling by Donovan. So, have you ever seen that? I I I I, I can't say. Look like almost a <coughs> almost a shovel pass. Or who's the? Was it Raleigh Fingers that used to throw the? Dan Quisenberry. Dan Quisenberry. Oh, right. The the, the the Laredo underhand type throw. That was outstanding and unexpected. So brings up a second and five. And let's see if he tries to throw with his left hand this time. Well, this time it's just a traditional handoff and pounding his way over the right hand side. That time is Justin Laughlin. And I'll tell you, for a one and eight team, this Cougar team is big and they're physical. Yeah, they're looking to end their high school careers, those uh, those seniors on an up note. You know, it's interesting. Riley uh, Riley Donovan is uh, as, as a senior. He's uh, from Bill Ruckey. He's five foot five foot six. So, not a real tall guy. Not the one, one of the taller quarterbacks we've seen on Pierce Field. But he has a little bit of a bag of tricks he brings to the ball game. Sure does. So that's a third and three. Very manageable. Down in distance, when you see a movement like usually it's going right, folks. That's exactly what it is. And zigging and zagging and zooming. This time it's Josh Smith, and it's all hands on deck for the Cougars. So it looks like they they're going to give him the first down. The spy punter's got a hand on him, uh, about two yards behind the first down, and Smith just uh, you know kind of powered forward and the the cougars are what the cougars are uh mia division six team and, correct yeah. and the uh spy punters division uh division two team right division three three division three so one wonders how it is that the this uh cougar team is one and eight this is this is unexpected and yeah, I mean, I didn't think that the Spy Pines would roll to a victory, but I sure as heck didn't think that the Cougars would spend half of the first quarter being physical and, quite frankly, dominant on both sides of the ball. I, I mean, we haven't seen the likes of the upper teams in the Middlesex League. Division One teams come in here and push this team around. Right. Right? Oh, right. Right. I mean, big bag uh, Stoneham Spartans could, didn't, didn't push them around like this. It was a tight yeah. game with uh, yeah. with uh, the, the five to go in the third. Yeah. So finally, the Cougars, uh, the Spy Potters do step up, and here's a traditional pass, and it's a pitch and a catch. And this time, uh, Jonathan shows that he can do it the traditional way. And right now, everything that Petralis is dialing up is having success. Yeah, they get Donovan out of the pocket where you can see the field and. He's been effective. That's his third completion of the ball game, and uh, with the Cougars up uh, six nothing, a little over halfway into the 
first uh, f you know first quarter they're on the 20 they're threatening again and they they, they have Donovan listed at five six and I think that's an accurate you know, this is a, a pint sized uh, a piston out there a pint sized uh, a, a, a Titan if you will here's Donovan just on a traditional handoff now and that's Laughlin on, over the right hand side now I don't know if we can see a replay of that that's a little bit uh, unorthodox handoff style uh, uh, he kind of takes a kind of a little bit of a shuffle step and then hands the ball off and, and, and rides a little bit. It's, it's, it's something that I've never seen. Actually, I have seen it's, it's a little bit of a wishbone action, to be quite frank with you, partner. I know that only because that's what I ran in high school. Hmm. Right now I'm talking to the dog off a meat truck. So, so that'll be second and six. Clock rolls coming up on 320 left in the first quarter. Cougars lead 6 nothing. And powering over the left-hand side is Laughlin. And I'll tell you, these backs are big, and they're physical, Rob. Is that Laughlin or is that Smith? That's, uh, I think that's Josh Smith, 6'1", 225-pound uh, senior. And 225 pounds uh, c coming at you. is one of the bigger fullbacks we've seen on, on, on Pierce Field this year. Well, you got Laughlin, who's 5'10 and 190, and both are strong and physical backs. So, second and five, this time over the left-hand side, stumbling, bumbling, and mumbling. Make sure I got that right, because I've been, Josh there we go, you're right, partner. It is Josh Smith. And unlike the mercurial former Atlanta Hawk lefty outside shooter was, who was a, a little bit tentative, oh, Josh Smith, Smith is, is, is quite aggressive. <laughs> yeah, no question about it. And that, that brings up uh, fourth, and, fourth and four. So the uh, Coach Petrola is showing a lot, of, a lot of faith in his running game, dialing up the, uh, the run on third down, and let's see what they do on fourth down. Yeah, this feels like a big play here for Donovan. Fourth and four, 151 left. Donovan's going to run it himself with the right-hand side. He zigs and zags and zooms. Coach uh, Gendron jumped up and down, hoping for his team to get a stop. I don't think they did, and then there was a little extracurricular activity as Donovan wouldn't go down. And, Rob, you know, Donovan's kind of like uh, tough, to, tough to to – to, to, to find among those those trees at five six yeah exactly I think that's part of what's going on and that was a, a little bit of a option action from uh, Donovan he had a big hole and he took advantage of it and so they'll go fast here this is outstanding this team is prepared they're dynamic and they're creative first and goal Donovan's going to throw it it's overhand it can be picked off and it is picked off going the other way Stumbling, bumbling, and mumbling out to the 30, to the 31 goes sophomore Kane Lynch. Bing, bang, boom, gobble, gobble. Wow, and Donovan just laid it out, and Lynch was there, and the receiver was not. Looked like a uh, little up pattern, little timing pattern where Donovan was throwing to a spot but he didn't quite get it out there far enough. And easy interception for Lynch. Nice run back. And just what the spy ponders needed, uh, something that will hopefully turn the momentum of this game as well as give them the ball. It, it, it fired up the Arlington uh, be bench and crowd who had had nothing to cheer for up to that moment. So now they're going to go to Tyler Callahan. He's going to try to get the outside and does. And Callahan says, I'm ready to play some football. And the Spy Ponders have some positive yardage. First big play from scrimmage for the Spy Ponders, a 15-yard gain by uh, Callahan. And we'll see if that this gets the offense humming a little bit. Well, it's going to be interesting because certainly, you know, we, we, uh, we are seeing a 1-8 and eight team that's Division Four, and they can play tough, they can be strong, and they can be physical, but a 1-8 and eight team in Division Four can't be deep, and they probably can't have a whole lot of speed, so the Spy Ponders can do what they've done in the past, and that's they've gotten very conservative. We have penalty on the Spy Ponders here. So that's going to be a, a hold that happened about 10 yards downfield. So, well, actually, it's going to be eight yards downfield. It's going to be a, a first 
and 12. And so even when the spy ponders get something positive going, it's actually something negative. Ouch. So clock rolls coming up on 40 seconds left in the first quarter. First and 12 as the wind howls here. This time Callahan tries to go over the B gap. Can't get anywhere. A pack of angry Cougars wrap them up that time. Led by Big 53, Cam McGuire, the 6'2", 230-pound sophomore, sophomore, super sophomore. And the Spy Ponders will have a second and eight. So we've yet to see positive yardage for on the evening for the Spy Ponders. Except for the, uh, the big play to Callahan, which was brought back by the penalty. Or the four-yard gain in the previous play. So uh, Bowler rolls out a little pitch and a little catch. Oh, and he gets absolutely pasted that time by Sean Simmons, who says, let me play. Big hit by, big hit by Simmons, and uh, the the Ponders are pinned back in their own end. It'll be interesting to see as the first quarter ends here, Scott, what they're what they're going to try to dial up to get this ball moving. What they the get the game plan they have uh, hasn't worked in the first quarter. Three more qu quarter quarters to go, but you'd think some adjustments are in order. Certainly, some adjustments are in order, and this is kind of the age-old coaching question, or in this case, a dilemma. If you are Gendron, you got to be saying to yourself, a quarter of the game's gone by. You've got to ask yourself, was my game plan adequate, do, do, or do I have to make serious changes, or just some quick fixes to get things right? Is this a scheme issue or an effort issue? Uh, you know, what do you see, Rob? You know, certainly effort right now. I'm not sure. I've seen a team come in here this year and play as hard as Arlington Catholic did in the first ha first quarter. Uh, Arlington Catholic is certainly bringing the effort in terms of what the what the issue is for the spy ponders. I think it's a it could be a, a weather a weather issue contributing to it. Uh, my app says, uh, Dark Sky says it feels like it's 23 degrees and it is uh, uh, windy gusts of wind uh if i'm reading right up to 26 miles an hour right now so that's making it hard on the passing game of the spy ponders and that's what the spy ponders have used this season to kind of get things moving to establish the the short pass as a way to kind of set up everything else that they do so third and seven now bowler rolls out to his left he's done well with this he's going to tuck it he runs he zigs and zags and i'll tell you the cougars have done what nobody else has been able to do against bowler and the spy ponders this year and that's get bowler down real quick and real early when he decides to run wow yeah, great point, Scott. That's been a real strength of the spy ponders. And, um, you know, if if, uh, if, Bull, if Bowler comes down, that's a red flag for the ponders. And I can hear the, the wind howling through the through the microphone here. I think that is Max Cohen's uh, microphone. I certainly I see her pants, uh, you know, kind of flapping in the breeze. What's it feel like down there, Max? Well, uh, you know, as, as the, the, the punt goes out of bounds at the 40 to the 42, so, Rob, you know, we mentioned in the, in the broadcast that Bowler had said a couple of years ago that his hands felt numb on a really cold day, and this would qualify as a really cold day. Bowler played well that day, so we know he's capable of playing well in the cold but some people just have a body that doesn't, or, you know, hands that get cold. You know, my wife's hands get really cold in, 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 in moderately cold weather. Yeah. And, you know, people react to cold different. Yeah, they do. it. And uh, Bowler has a kind of pro-style arm, long, de you know, long delivery. Donovan slings the ball around. We saw the little shovel pass, uh, tosses it like a dart. Might be more suited to his game. Yes, and Donovan, this time... Again, hands off to Josh Smith, who this time the Cougars are kind of getting getting a little more stout, a little more uh, uh, determined to, to, to shore up the defense, especially in those A and B gaps. 
we'll see if they go back to that bubble screen that they scored on. Uh, that that would be a, pr a pretty good call, although it might be something that they hold up in in uh, in reserve here for when they need it. But this is the part of the field at the 40-yard line where you where you often see plays like the bubble screen screen being dialed up. It could also have been a play where the the spy ponders have a. a, a uh, uh, a gap on a receiver that's particularly large and they wanted to go for it early. They can, he can throw this if he wants. That was thrown back, but he's not. He's going to run it and he's going to be very effective. Zigging and zagging and zooming is Joe Greenwood and great call. Partner, gobble, gobble. They do go back to that little bubble screen and it works. Absolutely. And, uh, um, you know, they just kind of swung it out and the, the, uh, the receivers cracked down and the, put the ponders, spy ponders into pursuit. And then uh, the Cougars have some speed out there. The spy ponders, uh, you know, couldn't get him down until after he's ran, runs for the first down. And here is been our albatross all year long and it's missing penalties when they happen. Yeah, these officials aren't throwing the flags uh, uh, where we can see them or the flags have maybe dulled or diminished in color over time, but we missed another one there, and I guess that's another hold, and so it'll go back. So now both teams are kind of getting getting nicked by the, by the penalty bug. I saw the flag. I just oh, didn't yeah. want to tell you about it. <laughs> uh, uh, there it is. There's uh, Mad uh, Max is all over it. Mad Max, I'll tell you. Nobody cold sees Max. Those, those. Mad Cold Max sees those penalties better than our Mad Max, our cold Mad Max. So second and 11 as Greenwood goes in motion and here's Donovan fleeing for his life little pitch and it goes in and out of the hands of Greenwood and partner that's really the effect of the cold weather that kind of ball you could feel that ball is what looked like a rock coming off Greenwood's hands there yeah it's not easy to it's not easy to cut uh, to throw it's even more difficult to catch and that time it was a little bobble once you bobble the ball on a night like tonight it's over absolutely i like donovan's delivery though he's he tosses uh, he's, it's a little little dark doesn't wind up at all gets it i i'd be surprised if he could throw the deep ball as a matter of fact his interception came on an, on an up route uh, but in terms of throwing those little darts on short distances uh, you know he's got he's got that part of his game down. He they they say throw it to him and he just throws his arm and tosses it out there. Does it does it again, Rob? You really uh, uh, keen eye on that? It's, it, and it's a pitch and a catch that time to I think that's Joe Greeny. And Rob, you know it's, it's almost like darts is is a good way to put it. It's, it's almost like he wasn't taught a traditional way to throw a football. But he's a good athlete, knows what he's doing, he's confident. And they say, okay, throw it to him. And he goes, oh, you mean just throw it like this? Well, yeah. Yeah, I guess. Well, it's interesting. How? Well, let's talk about it after this play. I have a comment about that. So here he is, and he's flushed out of the pocket. He's looking. He zigzag zoom and finally sandwiched that time by Charles Gillish. And he had help from Leo Maniti. Spy Potters have uh, d done, a good, done a good job pr protecting the outside of the uh, pocket and it, we were talking about donovan's delivery another way that can happen scott in my experience is uh, some sometimes if uh, you, you see a smaller player if the shoulder pad issue is a little bit too big right and with with big shoulder pads you can't get your your arm over the top so you learn how to kind of throw that semi sidearm dart that's really outstanding. It's wow. That's that brings back a memory because I had that issue one year in, in Pop Warner way back when. I'll, I'll bet you dollars or don't you hit the nail on the head. Okay, so here's Donovan, and now the flags go. I think that might be a false start by the Cougars, and what started out as a fast start for the Cougars, I, the Spy Ponders are very slowly robbed, kind of getting their footing it's kind of like the you know uh, the heavyweight that's been knocked down early gets up he's stunned he's staggering and as the round goes you're saying oh he's in trouble he's gonna get knocked out and then you look up you say well i don't think he's gonna get knocked out and 10 seconds later you say, oh he's landing some punches <laughs> i think that's what we're kind of seeing here they're warming up they're warming up baby so second in california for the cougars and donovan well we'll see what he has here and what Petrellis has up his sleeve. 
And here's Donovan looking to hold that ball like a bag of uh, a loaf of bread. And, uh, you know, I tell you, uh, one of my favorite things about any type of athletics is that players have uh, certain games, certain moxie to the way they play. And I, I really like the way that this Donovan plays. You know, there's a, it's not a cockiness, it's a, but it's a confidence, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it cert certainly is. And uh, it's fun. It, you know, it right? it's, it's fun to watch. Yeah. Him. It's, it's almost a Doug Flutie-esque aspect here. What's gonna, you know, what's gonna happen next? Yeah, and and, and, and and there's always something special about someone who might be the shortest player on uh, on the field who you are identifying as the most confident. Right. There's something special and wonderful about that. Right. And I see that in Donovan. He's out there. He's confident. He's like, let's go, baby. I'm gonna lead this team down the field. I can run it. I can throw it. I'm ready to go. So third in California now for Donovan and his cohorts. And now it's a little screen. I love those little screens. I love those little screens, but the spy ponders have it sniffed out. They say, you may love the little screens, but this time, uh, uh, Christian Santilli, you're not going anywhere. And that's a big stop with this, for the spy ponders. The clock rolls coming up on 9, 545 left in the half. Yeah, you see the center screen, you hold your breath a little bit. You know, we'll, 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 is this going to be one that they break? But the spy potters put that time four hats on the ball. They weren't really cool. They, they weren't. And just as we were uh, tossing verbal bouquets at Donovan's way, I thought he maybe gave that away a little bit early. He kind of caught the ball. He's already retreating. I mean, it was, this guy yeah. isn't going to take a 12 step drop and make a pass. Yeah. So, uh, so fourth down and back to receive for the spy ponders is Callahan. It's an angled kick, beautiful kick. I'll tell you, we have seen some punts on this field. Callahan picks it up, he zigzag zooms, does a beautiful Madden 18 move, gets over the yeah. 24 to the 25, and that's X button in Madden. X button in Madden. Little, little side step, little Absolutely. Mis Mr. Bojangles, you've called it in the past at about the 12. 12 yard line made the bad guys miss and continued on up the field. I thought Callahan maybe shouldn't have picked up that ball in a night like tonight, but he proved me wrong. He sure did. I was thinking the exact same thing uh, that, that it's something that that could end in uh, uh, nothing or disaster, but he made something out of nothing by making the by pressing X button in your Madden 18 playbook. So first and 10 for Bowler. Let's see if they reward Callahan for his Bojangles, they don't. And here's Bo, this time he's gonna run and he looks a little tender. You know, it's funny as you see him get wrapped up by a, a pack of Cougars. And, you know, we noted that this is the first he has really been able to put a, a early lick on Bowler. And you saw there you know, a little bit of a, a hesitation and a flag on the play. What's the call, Max? Well, when in doubt, go with the minus 180 call, and that's a holding. And let's see if Mad Max is right. Ooh, no, Mad Max is not right. It was, I believe, it, very good. That's exactly what, it, ooh, look at this methodical strike. Methodical strikes, wow. Methodical stripes with an excellent belly there for a Thanksgiving meal. He's going to be eating the turkey and the... Uh, fixings and all the stuff like that and so that's a big first down for the spy ponders and somebody on uh, the Cougars are getting naughty <laughs> get naughty so first and ten clock like a roll it's coming up on 440 left in the first half the Cougars lead on Thanksgiving Eve Six nothing. Eve. <laughs> and Callahan goes over the right hand side. He can't get much. And I'll tell you, both teams are trying to get this run game going off that B and C gap. And they're, it's really kind of a mixed bag. But both defensive lines are really playing hard and really making tackles. No question. No question about it. Both teams are going to have a hard time finding something that is going to uh, spring for. Uh, big yards tonight. We'll see 
when the spy punters can dial up the big play. This is one of those games where you're going to have to accept that plays aren't going to work, and it's going to be the team that's going to be the most patient and the most aggressive and the team that doesn't quit and keeps trying that ends up having the most success. And that's a that's a, that's a, a, a perfect example right there. So, okay, you say to yourself, ah, that's not really a, 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 a big play, but you know what? It's positive yardage. He pushed for a couple extra more, and to me, maybe it's it's a big picture thought. We're trying to do something positive on every play and hope that eventually the, the day will break. Yeah, the, the spy punters are having a hard time getting their athletes open in space. Everything seems very all, all bunched up tonight, doesn't it? It really does. It's, it's a remarkable achievement by the Cougars who have made the spy punters perfect way to put it just not able to get open in space when some of the top teams in the state of the, uh, uh, Massachusetts haven't been able to and this time Bowl they wrap up Bowl and I'll tell you something it, so it looks to me right now it, it, partner if I was to guess Petrella said he's been scouting this team and he said I'm going to tell you one thing I don't care what happens tonight I don't care if we lose 75 nothing I don't care what happens in this football field Adam Bowler is not running the football on my team Simple, simple as that. That's I think a, that's exactly that's a what's great going call. on. And I, I think it's a great call, uh, by especially Coach Petrellis. And uh, it, but it, I, to me, that when, when I just saw those two players who didn't even look at the player that that he was trying to uh, mesh with, I said to myself, this this, this Petrellis has said that Bowler is not beating him with his legs tonight, which is is really kind of second level teach, uh, thinking, don't you think, you know, Bowler, one of the most effective passes we've seen out there, and Petrellis has kind of said, you know, well, one thing he's not beating with is his legs. Yeah, yeah, and that's um, that, that's that's really been Bowler's and the spy ponder's secret weapon this year, and that was sniffed out, apparently, by Coach Petrellis. And, you know, again, we, you know, so this goes back to the theme. These are in-town teams. These kids on the uh, on the Cougars, they literally know Adam Bowler. They know who he is. Hmm. They know what he's about. They know the year he's having. Why? Because some of them have talked to him. That's the beauty and the fun of a rivalry like this. So first and ten for Jonathan, the five-seven pint-sized Titan, and a little bit of an unorthodox handoff is breaks free for Smith who rumbles, stumbles, bumbles, and breaks free. There he goes to the 40, and finally he's absolutely leveled and lambasted by, I believe that was Kane Lynch, but not after Smith goes for big yardage. 48 yards by, by Smith, and uh, Smith showing some speed, breaks it to the outside, and just when you thought he was going to try to rumble all the way down the sidelines, he showed the guts to try to try to outrun the defense back to the middle, and the spy ponders caught up with him. Uh, this is my kind of game. What a, what a play by Smith, but what a hit there. These, play, these teams are going at it. This is football at its best, guys. This is, uh, gentlemen and, and ladies and gentlemen, this is what it's all about is five players make a tackle there this is football the way it's supposed to be played hard nose everyone giving their best effort and trying to demonstrate to both themselves the other team and the fans what they've improved with so the cougars are uh with the wind on this on this drive and you know again my app shows and you can confirm max i'm seeing a lot of things flowing around there my app shows a 26 mile an hour wind is the wind whipping up to 26 mile an hour miles an hour uh, uh max so so max who, who is with the wind it, it, does does uh professor have it right Max, would you say the wind at 26 miles an hour is something that whoever is, is has the choice? Uh, I can't remember, recall. Uh, I believe it was the Spy Pines. Uh, they got the wind in the first quarter. They right. Oh, okay, so they get the ball, but they could actually choose wind in the second half and, get, and, and kick the ball off. I've seen that done before at even the pro level. And Max, is it that uh, is it that much wind that you might even think about kicking the ball off and getting wind in the fourth quarter?
Rob, would you, would you ever consider that? I mean, this seems something that that that, that I don't think you, as, as yeah. what I know, would you think you would? So, uh, so I, 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 oh, I thought uh, that I've experienced. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. No. I've not experienced 20, 20 degree, <laughs> uh, 26 mile an hour wind before. No. No. Did, but I would consider t taking the win in the fourth I, quarter. I, I Absolutely. Think if, if it's as high, if as much, and there's the pass. And I'll tell you, there's the wind right there. A beautiful pitch and catch that tie. Greenwood goes into the end zone. And right on cue, the wind shows its, its dominance on the field. And also. My man, the 5'6", tiny titan, Riley Donovan, throws a beautiful strike. And the Cougars are out in front 12 nothing. Well, just as we talked about it, the, uh, the Cougars are taking advantage of the win by throwing the football. And we haven't seen Donovan throw the ball, uh, you know, throw a deep strike, but he did that time. And he put it right on the numbers to Greenwood. So Rufo went to try the extra point. This time it's it's muffed, it's up, and it's no good. And so with 121 left in the first half, the Cougars lead 12-0. And Rob, why don't you recap to uh, those at home? Happy Thanksgiving to you and yours on a Thanksgiving Eve from us here at ACMI at Pierce Field in Arlington. Rob, how did we get to 12 nothing? Well, uh, this, this game from a scoring standpoint and from probably a football standpoint has been all Arlington Catholic. At 8.15 in the first quarter, we saw a 60-yard bubble screen from Donovan to DeLeo. The two-point conversion failed. Then we just witnessed with 121 to go in the half, a 25-yard uh, deep pass from Donovan to Greenwood. PAT failed to make it 12 nothing. So now you're going to see some interesting partner. My, my, here's my take right now. The spy punters are going to get the ball, and Coach uh, Gendron is going to let us know what he thinks of this win. If he puts the ball on the ground here and basically concedes this first half and runs the ball and says, okay, we'll go in 12, down 12 nothing, and we'll come out in the second half. Maybe we can get running in, but but if you, because this is a, this is where Bowler would absolutely positively be throwing the ball. And if he concedes a run here, a couple of runs in the first half, I'd say that he thinks that the, that, the, that the, this wind is serious business. Yeah, I, uh, as, as the ball won't stay on the tee, right? Um, I'll tell you what I'd like to see after this play. So, let's see, you see the wind there again, a, a booming kick that's wind aided and coming up the middle and getting a lane going through there with reckless abandon is Tyler Callahan and Callahan's <laughs> return have been the biggest offense the Spy Pirates have been able to generate all game. And the Spy Potters are showing an urgency by pushing the pile there. Every guy got his hat in the, in the pile and pushed it forward. And we'll see if that urgency uh, can, continues here. I would like to see in this kind of uh, weather and conditions, this uh, at the from the 37-yard line, I, I'd like to see McGivaray get involved. I'd like to see Maniti get involved. Let your more physical receivers get the ball just three, four yards downfield and try to try to bully their way forward. So they go empty, and you see what, what Coach Jenner thinks about that win, and when he thinks of Adam Bowler, he thinks, and right on cue, the professor is prophetic, and there's McGivaray over the 50 to the 49 clock. Stops with 102, and the Spy Ponders will take a timeout. Bing, bang, boom, gobble, gobble to the parts. <laughs> and Coach Jenner agrees with me. He gets it to McGivaray. McGivaray is a physical, a physical guy. He gets yards He's after the guy. catch. You can throw the ball down to him four or five yards. It's a kind of well, pass you can complete in the wind. Doesn't rely on a lot of juking and jiving or anything. Can put his shoulder down and, and, and get, the, get the tough yards after the catch. That time he also threw an elbow as he was going down to the ground. And uh, that little extra physicality shows some spunk. Might have actually gotten called had an official seen it. So, partner, here's a question for you. So the spy partners get a first down. They call a timeout. And then the Cougars came back and called another timeout. Back-to-back -back empties by by Gendron is is maybe Petrella showing his hand a little bit. A timeout there. Maybe he doesn't like empty sets. Oh, could be. And uh, so we're going to see. Uh, uh, this is the game within a game. Yes. Perhaps. 
Yes. Little ch little chess match here. Yeah. And uh, we're gonna see what what Petralis does does against the uh, does against the empty. Maybe he knows that the spy ponders like to do the QB draw out of the empty. He's will put a spy on Adam Bowler. Good call there. That's it. You know. Wow. Uh, yeah, you are on top of this game, partner, because I think that's exactly what it was. Because what is he? Uh, my, my guess is Petrellis has said one thing. Bowler will not beat me with his legs tonight. First and ten. Here's Bowler. He's going to try to run. And this is just what Petrellis didn't want. This is just what Petrellis didn't want. Bowler gets to the outside. Zigging and zagging and zooming. Partner, you called it. Maybe Petrellis called it as well. But Bowler was Johnny on the spot. There he went for a big first down. I love that play, I'm, and I bet it was a called play. So Bowler looks to his left, looks to his left, looks to his left, looked out, looked off the entire defense, the entire secondary went over to the left side of the field. All Bowler has to do is beat the right end to the edge, and he can run for distance, and that's exactly what happened. Sure did, and you know we we, we know that that these high school kids. Once they turn one way, that they don't have looks on both sides of the field. When they go one way, if they come back the other, it's a run because they're not throwing back the other way. Nobody has three looks in, in, the, in the high school game, certainly not in Division two and three in Massachusetts. So first and ten, here's Bowler. Little pitch and a little catch that time. Little pitch and a little catch to McGivory. And the clock rolls. And McGivory's getting involved here. The clock will stop, and the Spy Pirates take another timeout. And wow, what a game that's broken out here. Coach Gendron, I was questioning whether he was going to say this wind is too much. Not only did he not say the wind isn't too much, he goes empty. Bowler slinging it all over the field. The empty set obviously is something that the Cougars don't like because they've struggled with it both passing and now with Bowler running. And now there are 39.8 seconds left, according to the clock, uh, in the in the half. And with a 12 nothing score ball on the 12-yard lines, I'd say it's pretty pretty much imperative for, for the spy ponders to get the ball in the end zone. This is going to be a uh, tough 12 yards and and somewhat of a race against the clock. No doubt. And I'll tell you, Rob, some one team is going to go into the half unbelievably disappointed right here because if you're the Cougars and you're only down say three or you know, four or five only up four or five you're gonna be disappointed if the spy ponders did nothing here they're gonna be crestfallen first and ten for Bowler here he's running again now the Cougars say not this time but again Bowler does what he's done all year gets paced out of bounds but he made the first man miss he absolutely did. That is vintage Adam Bowler. You know, Boy. going to breaking it, breaking it to the outside for yardage. He looked like he was trapped, and instead gets the ball into about the what is it about the six yard line? Yeah, big big run by the senior captain. His last last night of high school football. What can you say about Bowler? You know, I mentioned uh, partner as a five pointers call a timeout. I mentioned partner a few plays back. The bowler looked a little tentative, and I, I wouldn't. You know, I, I yeah. thought he did. Then look tentative there. Bowler's someone that doesn't quit, keeps trying, and you saw him finally make somebody miss. And the Cougars got to understand that that they they've got to keep their 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 technique and they got to keep their effort on Bowler, or he's going to be going right past him. So I would like to see Leo Mani Leo Maniti here. That would be my that would be my call. Well, you know, big physical you, you, receiver in the middle of the field. You know what I love? I love that little pop pass. It's just a little turn, and you know he yep. goes, It's just it's it's three steps and turn. It's not a button hook. He, I want him to keep running, but it's three steps turn. Bowler just picks the ball up and fires it. The the beauty about that pass is you. You, you're not really worrying about the defense because the defense can be in position. What happens a lot of times, the defender is in position. What he does, he freezes. You know, he doesn't make a Especially play tonight. Ball. Right. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Right. Him and Max. So second and two. The clock rolls now. And now it stops. So a little bit of uh, tomfoolery with the play clock. As we know here in Spy Ponder land, the official play clock is kept on the field by an official on his watch that is on his hand. As unorthodox and uh, uneasy. See, this is what the official is doing right now. This official is coming over, and he is letting Gen Coach Gendron know 
how much play time is left in the first half, although maybe he was just getting a snack or a, a gravy recipe. So second and two, they go back to the pistol. This is interesting. This means it should be a run. Bubble screen to Maniti. No, good call. He can run it if he wants. It's turned back, goes back the other way, and it is incomplete. It was intent. I can't see it's dark. I think it was it Sam Swift or was it, uh, I think it's Peter Roach. And so we got, uh, so they got, to, now here, here's a question, partner. I mean, can they kick a field goal here? I mean, it's yeah, that was third and. Uh, that was Swift. Is Sam Swift? Okay. So it's third and two. I don't know. They're against the, uh, against the, against the win here. I mean, he certainly has enough leg. And, and, and a field goal is a big play here because it puts them, um, well, no. no, it's not really. No, see, so you're going for it here. My bad. I had to take my shoes and socks off to count that out, but I got there. Third and three. So this is uh, two, two down territory for the Spy Ponders. Let's see if they hand to Callahan here going left. No, it's going to be Bowler. Over the right-hand side, he plows over the five to the four. No signal yet. It's definitely a first down. So they're going to give it first and goal from the one. And let's see if the Spy Pinders have a timeout left. And they do. They're going to take it. So it's going to be first and goal from the one. And so, Rob, last week we heard, we saw, and we heard Coach Gendron, same play, same play down here at the goal line. They ran the same play. I believe he called it uh, uh, power Q or power ISO right. We saw that there. Yeah. One thing when you're in the power eye like that, it's legal not to push from behind. Yeah. So Bowler can go from behind, and Callahan can come up and shove him right in the end zone. Same play here. What do you think, partner? I you, like that. You, you've I been like on page play. all day long. Yeah, I love it too. I like that. I like that play a lot. The the, the, the one uh, part of the football game that the punters really have not gotten on track this year is the power running game. But that particular play and that particular set uh, has been effective. And right here. Uh, you know, it's, a, it's the perfect you get 17.4 seconds. You get three cracks at that any, anyway. If you can't uh, push the ball in from a yard, uh, you know, you don't deserve deserve to win the football game. So first and goal for the Spy Ponders as Bowler. And, and so it's going to be the same play, folks. Here he goes. Up and over. It goes Bowler. No sin. There it is. Adam Bowler in a bing, bang, boom, gobble, gobble. And you called it. Bowler goes up and over the top there, reaches out, and the spy punters immediately call a touchdown. The refs agree. And so with 13 seconds left, that's an unofficial time. The spy punters uh, execute what I would have to say is their most effective and inspired execution of the season, especially on offense. Bowler was in a bad spot. He wasn't running the football. He was having trouble completing passes, and he just ma manufactured a magnificent drive. Here's Swift tried the extra point. The kick is up, and the kick is good. As you saw the wind take it to the right, and with 13 seconds left in the first half, the Spy Ponders punch back, and they're down 12-7. Very important for the Spy Ponders to get on the board there before going into halftime. And as you pointed out, Scott, now they can feel good about themselves over halftime. If you're the Arctic Catholic Cougars, you also feel good. You played a very, very good, uh, very, very good first half. Now, with uh, thir unofficial 13.3 seconds left, I would expect that the Cougars would just take a knee here and uh, along one, one step closer to Turkey tomorrow we go. Well, this is the, the, the one of the ideas behind when you play super conservative in a half is if you have made a mistake, but your last impactful play was a mistake, you want to play as conservative as possible because you don't want one mistake to lead to two mistakes. You want to regroup. If you're on a roll, maybe let it go. So they kick out of bounds. This is going to be interesting here. So there'll be a 10-yard penalty back to the 30. And now what comes into play here, the spy punters are certainly worried. They've had outstanding kick coverage all year, but they don't want to give up a big, uh, a big return. And we'll see if the spy ponders <laughs> bait the Cougars into trying to actually run a play by giving them outstanding field position. 
you know, with the win. And I will note that uh, that Mad Max has ra waved, waved the white flag on the first half. He's got rosy red cheeks. He's diving for the hand warmers here in the booth. He's re he's reading the 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 warnings of the hand warmers to the the. <laughs> he's from Florida. He doesn't know what these are. He looks at them. He's are these toxic? Can I can they touch my skin? What's going on here? He's he's peeling them off. Outstanding work by Mad Max. Gonna warm himself up. And at halftime, we're, we're gonna be lucky to have Arlington High Athletic Director Stanley Vieri come in and talk to us about. Uh, you can tell us about the process of the decision to play tonight instead of tomorrow. You can tell us a little bit about Thanksgiving for next year with the football team. And he's going to talk a little bit about the upcoming fall season, which starts Monday. Bing, bang, boom to all the fall athletes. So let's see what the, the tiny titan, Jonathan, has up his sleeve, and they will go conservative as Smith stumbles, bumbles, mumbles. Joey Pazia, with a little bit of help from friends, and General let the let it run out. And as the clock strikes zero, that's the end of the first half. And in what might be a little bit of a surprise to some on Thanksgiving Eve, wishing you and you. Uh, you and yours a happy Thanksgiving tomorrow. The Arlington Catholic Cougars leave 12, lead 12 7 in partner. How surprised are you? Yeah, I gotta say I'm a little, I'm a little bit surprised. You know, we hadn't seen the Cougars. Uh, you know, record isn't uh, isn't flashy, but the but the play on the field has been really stellar, and they've done it. The the uh, the Cougars have done it at both sides of the ball. Offensively, they've moved the football. They've shown a running attack with Smith, a big, powerful back. Uh, Donovan has uh, struck with the bubble screen as well as the deep post. And defensively, they've really made the spy pawners work for it. They've stopped. They've stopped the run. They've uh, limited the, the the downfield passing attack. I mean, uh, this this Cougar team has been impressive. Very impressive, and and what has been a a a theme all year long the inspired play by both teams high level of effort hard hitting big time effort and execution by both teams especially in the hitting department yeah and the spy punters uh you know you saw that i think what set the tone for that last possession was on the kickoff you saw you saw six or seven spy punters come and push the pile forward on the kick return and that's a little bit of an extra effort play that says okay we get it now this is uh this is going to be a ball game and this is going to take that extra effort to win and so we're going to do that we understand it and we're going to do that and they sh that, that was a very gritty final possession so we go into the second half with a really exciting football game here on New Year's Eve day last game of a crosstown rivalry and a very fitting one at that so with that why don't you take a little bit of time to uh, uh, put brine that turkey uh, go to Whole Foods and buy, purchase those fixins peel those potatoes as you get ready for Thanksgiving tomorrow and when we get when we come back from the break, we're going to talk to Arlington Athletic Director uh, Stanley Vieira, and we'll be right back right after this. Bing bang boom, gobble gobble. Wise men say only fools rush in. Oh. Oh, but I can't help falling in love with you. So tonight we assemble to enjoy a beautiful night of music, to raise money for the fight against the rare and deadly sarcoma cancer, and to remember our beloved daughter, Catherine Malatesta. And I'll leave you with a quote I know Catherine would appreciate and love. Maybe if we listen to each other's music, we will be li willing to listen to each other's words. Lately, I find myself out gazing at stars, hearing guitars like someone in 
So just and we're back. I'm here with Arlington High Athletic Director Stanley Vieira. And Stanley, welcome and happy Thanksgiving uh, to you. Same to you. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Awesome. So tell us a little bit about, so we're playing here uh, the night before Thanksgiving. Yep. And I know the, 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 the word of the street was that, uh, you know, it was going to be very cold, dangerously cold tomorrow. Tell us a little bit about how the process goes about making the decision. Sure, like Scott. That. Absolutely. So we, we, went, we went through this. I met with our superintendent, Dr. Bodie, our, our principal, Dr. Janger, uh, first thing in the morning, talked about how uh, the day before a lot of different communities also canceled their game, rerouted it to Wednesday night. We thought it was a great idea. When we looked at the radar, looked at the weather, weather.com, we saw that the, uh, the wind chill was going to make it below zero. We thought that's, that's an opportunity for our students to get hurt, things like frostbite, hypothermia, you know, and not just our, our football players, but our cheerleaders, our video people, our, our fans, our parents, our grandparents. It just didn't make sense for us from a health standpoint. We went through it. We called a lot of other schools. Uh, and we just felt like it was the right thing to do for, for the safety and the health of, our, of all of our people. That's interesting. I appreciate you sharing with us that process because a lot of people kind of think maybe people just kind of wake up, uh, stick a finger in the air and say, well, <laughs> we're going to do this. So. Um, so let's move forward. And some wonderful things are happening out in the football field yep. tonight. But next year, Thanksgiving, we're starting a new tradition, aren't we? We are starting a new tradition, Scott. Uh, we're excited about it. So uh, when I came here back in August, uh, I had some, uh, some wonderful conversations with Dan Shine, the athletic director over at... Uh, at Arlington Catholic, who's been an amazing resource, a real, real friend to the program, and, and somebody who Arlington knows. He's been around, I believe, over 40 years yeah. now at, at his post. Um, and we talked about how we felt, he felt like maybe it was time um, for, um, for both of us to kind of move on and start a new tradition, you know? Um, and it's been great. It's been super positive. We, at the time, I wasn't sure where to go, and somebody had said, perhaps an old greater Boston League rival, Waltham, uh, was also looking to make a change. We connected. Uh, Steve LaForest, the AD over at Waltham, was super excited about rekindling the old rivalry. It was an easy fit for us, so we're excited to start next year with Waltham High School. So next year, is it going to be, do we know yet, is it going to be at Waltham or is it going to be here? Great question. It's actually going to be here. We're going to host it first year. 
So Super. we're excited to have it here back here. So we're, we're really excited about that, starting a new tradition. Super, absolutely. And it's going to be exciting, exciting stuff happening here and an exciting new tradition next absolutely. year. Absolutely. That's what Thanksgiving is all about. So moving forward, Monday's a big day yes. as we kind of, what they call, flip the calendar. We do, we do. And now we have the, the winter sports coming up. Yeah, we're excited about winter sports. So family ID has been open. People are registering their, their children for, uh, for winter sports. Uh, everything from getting your physical done to signing your primary promissory note and also doing your impact test so it's, there's some things that need to happen before you can actually start with the sports most of our kids have done it already uh, but there's still a few that still haven't done it but we're excited about all of our winter sports it's a, it's a, the one thing about it Scott that's amazing is high school sports you really get no breather you go right in from one season to the next right and I'm excited about watching our hockey teams uh, we're excited about our track teams and our basketball teams and our wrestling teams swimming I mean we have a variety of sports 10 sports sports over the winter that really excite me and uh, uh, my my big job here is to get to as many events as possible to support our kids support our families and you, you, we see it out out here with all this support uh, you, we, there's a high partici partition rate, participation excuse me rate at, at the high school and you're, we're just looking to make that grow right absolutely it's amazing to see the number just to give you kind of a, a sense we had 460 almost 470 fall athletes wow just to give you an idea how many student athletes we have here at Arlington High School it's an unbelievable community uh, and people who are very dedicated our parents our boosters our our external people everybody from DPW uh, to our maintenance and our custodians our administrative staff. It's an amazing family. It truly is. And it, it, I really like to point that out uh, on Thanksgiving because that was the thing that we, Thanksgiving is all about. Family, tradition, people coming together, being positive, yeah. and, and, and working for improvement and, 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 and being happy. Yeah, so, there's no question, Scott. Absolutely. If I can say one last thing. Sure. Uh, I know people were um, taken back by this change, you know, the, 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 the game change of day. And for me, it's just I, I want to apologize to anybody that we put out. I know that, you know, where we made it on Wednesday, I'm sure there were some people that maybe couldn't make it, you know. So I want people to understand that this was really about the safety of our kids, you know. We weren't trying to cause any issues, and we understand that we may have caused some you know, some, some concern or some issues with some people, and we truly apologize. For us, it was a making sure we were taking care of our own. Well, yeah, I appreciate you apologizing because I, I, I know you, you, you want to make sure that, that everyone has a voice and that no one feels that they're being slighted. But I, I also understand that, you know, when it comes to the safety of the kids, you're, there really can be no wiggle room. Absolutely. And, and that's just the way it's got to be so yeah. that, that we can all have a, a healthy and happy Thanksgiving. No question. So with that, um, uh, we'll look forward to a big second half. Absolutely. And, Thanks for stopping by. Thank you, Scott. Uh, happy Thanksgiving to you and your family. You as well. And hopefully we'll see you back for the the, the winter sports. I look forward to it, Scott. All Thank right. you so much. Thanks for coming in. All righty. All right. So we'll be back for the second half right after this. Bing, bang, boom. Drawing second prize, which is 20 scratch tickets. 20 scratch tickets. And the number is 398 2935. This is again for second prize 398 2935. And now for the grand prize, two Celtics tickets. Ticket number is 398 2945. 398 
2945. And those are your ticket numbers. Please report to the press box. Thank you very much, fans, and a very, very happy Thanksgiving. We're back with the second half action of the last game in the Thanksgiving Day Turkey Day Classic between Arlington High School and Arlington Catholic. And Rob, 12 7. You know, we talked before the break about changes that had to be made, but we didn't really discuss, we discussed a lot of that first half, and that's the win. What's the what important is the what importance is the wind going to play in the in the in the first half? Well, according to dark sky, it's 34 degrees. It feels like 21. Wind is gusting up to 24 miles an hour. So that's obviously not only impacting the the play, but it's impacting the game planning. Our, uh, the Cougars will start with the wind here in the third quarter, which means the Spy Ponders will have the wind in the fourth quarter. You called it, Scott. I think the Spy Ponders uh, like that. Look for uh, the Cougars to try to pass the ball a little bit as they have with the win here in the third quarter. And uh, the Spy Ponders are going to have to run the football. And, you know, I've seen these games before. And I'll tell you right here, folks, here's a kind of a prediction, something to look for as a ball hits the turf. And that is Ziggin and Zagin finally getting absolutely pasted is Sam McKierney. And that that's Rob that, you know, so... The, the, the Cougars have the wind in, in the third, Spike Fighters in the fourth. I'll tell you, if the Cougars can't increase this lead to more than a touchdown here, they're going to have, I think, almost an uphill battle in the fourth because when Bowler, when that field flips and Bowler now has a little bit of oomph at his back, look out for that empty set. So here is Riley Donovan who had a sensational first half as he keeps it, zigzag spins over the 40, 45 to the 46. And it, it's almost kind of kind of playing out, Rob, as if, so when you're against the win, you're going to have to find creative and, and powerful ways to run the football. And when you got the win, you're going to be, you're going to have to find ways to throw it. Second and five. A little play action, and the ball's tipped. It's a live ball, and it is intercepted there. That is Joey Pazia. Bing, bang, boom, gobble, gobble. Outstanding play by Pazia, and that time the, uh, the, the size of Donovan, I think, hurt him a little bit. Ball gets batted up in the line of scrimmage, and very heads up by P Pazia coming down with the football. The spy ponders had all the momentum going into halftime, and they pick up right where they left off on the second play from scrimmage. Pazia gets a tip and a pick. W-O-W. -W. This is deja vu all over again. It seems like just a few minutes ago when the Ponders were in this exact position going into the end zone. First and 10 for Bowler. It's a little play action, a little pitch. And it is caught a beautiful catch by Peter Roach. Bing, bang, boom, gobble, gobble. Outstanding play by the Spy Ponders. An outstanding play by the defender. That was, that time uh, it was Sean Simmons for the for the Cougars who was right on the play. But 
Bowler delivered it right on the numbers, and Roach went down for the ball and, and came up with it. And now the Ponders are in business. They're in business. First and 10. Ball at the 12. Bowler looks to the sideline for a little bit of help on this play. He's already called the play line of scrimmage. He doesn't want to call a timeout here. I'll tell you that, folks. Down 12-7. So a little bit of confusion here. Bowler takes his time. And a little pitch. He's got a man out of the middle. And it's a touchdown. Leo Maniti brings it in. Bing, bang, boom. There's your man, Maniti. Maniti. I like Maniti in the middle of the field in the red, red zone. At that time, Maniti was wide open. But must have been a blown assignment by the defense. He, he went right where the, the free safety vacated. And... Bowler put it up over the top. Good recognition by Bowler that Maniti was wide open. Kind of that was a little bit too easy for the spy punters. But you, we'll take it. You, we will. And you wonder if Bowler was playing possum there. If they had called maybe a run play and nobody was calling Maniti and Bowler didn't really have a way to check out of it, kind of looked at the sideline and said, what do you want me to do? And I think Jenner kind of said, just throw it to him. So here's Swift and the extra point. The kick is up. And the kick is good. And with 9.35 left in the third quarter, your spy ponders have turned the tables on the Arlington Catholic Cougars with 14 unanswered points. Great turn of events if you're the spy ponders and the turnover is, uh, forcing the turnover is big. And if you're the Arlington Catholic Cougars, you've got to find a way to regain the kind of pep in the step and the momentum that you had uh, for much of the first half because the last, uh, you know, two minutes of this ball game to end the first half and then here to open the second half have not been kind to them. They sure haven't. And Rob, one of the issues that the Cougars will face and I, I think I identified it early on. Uh, they have size and they have some, some strength, but they don't have speed. And when you don't have speed and you're up against the momentum-wise, you don't want these things to happen here as the ball hits the turf, but they wisely fall on it at the 40. It, you know, this is when if the other team has a pep in their step and you're trying to out-muscle them, it's going to be a challenge. No question, no question about it. As the as the wind clearly picks up, I'm looking at one of the spy ponder coaches who has some sort sort of a game plan on laminated paper coming out of his uh, shirt, and it's whipping around and slamming him in the face. Max, <laughs> is, is has the wind picked up? Are we looking at the same type of thing or? Uh, unbelievable. So over the left hand side, stumbling and bumbling and mumbling and. Robert, you know, I, I said you, you might struggle a little bit of your physical team, but if you got, uh, 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 what's his, uh, excuse me, uh, Josh Smith of stumble and bumble like that, you're going to be doing just fine. Yeah, that uh, the five, six yard gain on first down is always welcome if you're the offense. So second and five, and, you know, it's not like a broken record all year, but it's, it's kind of the way high school football is. If you're getting... A lot of yards on first down, you're going to have some success, and the Cougars really haven't had that first down success uh, since, you know, late in the, the, the first quarter, early second. So now they go back to Smith, but this time the spy ponders snip it out. Uh, a host of uh, spy ponders on top of that one, in, including Charles Gillis, and Gillis has played well. Good play by, good play by Gillis and put in the uh, Cougars in a third, you know, third and long situation. And Gillis has been one of those kind of uh, you know, unsung hero. Gillis has been in the trenches, battling every game, getting, you know, doing the dirty work. You know, rarely call his name, but, you know, any success the spy fighters have had in the trenches, you know, Gillis has been right there uh, on top of it. Gillis, Sagazian, Meyer. And another ball is picked off! That time it's Stephen McGivory and Rob. Here's your man McGivory. Outstanding play that time. And speaking of which, it was uh, I think it was Sagazian. Let's see. 
Oh, is that Segazian? Yes, it is, who, who got his big paw on the ball as it left the line of scrimmage. Once again, the kind of low launch point from Donovan hurts uh, hurts the Cougars, and Segazian batted it up in the air, and, and uh, great play by really a tussle for the ball. Both the Cougar had it and uh, uh, McGivaray had it. McGivaray just willed it into his hand, said, I'm taking this. From the professor's mouth, to Sajian's ears, and then to McGivory's arms. So first and <laughs> 10 for, that's not bad. Wow. <laughs> first and 10 for the spy point is, and over the left hand side, and there is a big hit that time by playing both ways is Josh Smith, and this Smith can hit. Would you say that was, uh, he got, Runner got gobbled up. Sure did. Gobble, gobble. Absolutely. I made uh, I made cranberry sauce today. You did. Outstanding. Yeah. I saw I saw uh, uh, a, 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 a three for pie. Uh, yep. I, I've heard rumors through. A little birdie told me. Uh, uh, we're going blueberry. We're going cherry. We're going apple. Oh, uh, that's the trifecta right there, trifecta. baby. Trifecta. That is the trifecta of pies. So second and ten. Here's Bowler. It's a little delayed screen, and they wrap him up, but no, they don't. And this is what everyone struggled with all year long. The first person can't bring Bowler down, and he stumbles, bumbles, and mumbles. He even zigzagged and zoomed for a big game. Yeah, look, look at that. Uh, <laughs> uh, big, big number 83. Uh, Frank Cancellieri, who's six six foot four, two hundred five pounds, has very long arms. Got his arms. Got a wrap on Bowler, but Bowler, uh, Bowler ripped out of it. Bowler is not an easy guy to bring down, is he? No. And that takes that takes a certain kind of willpower and concentration, and uh, really experience as a football player to understand that when. You, you know, when you're wrapped up, that's time to fight. That's not time to go down. Third-year starter, um, that's part of what that buys you. It's part of what it buys you. And let's be frank, this was Bowler was not a running quarterback until this year. He just wasn't. He right. run the football. Yeah, that's right. So it, it, to, to, to say that it's that's what he's doing with is not exaggeration or hyperbole. So there's a little nifty little screen, and the, and the Cougars sniff it out. I'll tell you, that's a heck of a play there by Calvin uh, by uh, uh, Joe Greeny and, and Rob, I'll tell you, both these teams, especially the Cougars, they tackle well. Yeah, no question about it. There's and they bring a lot of hats to the ball. Yeah, and um, you know, there's some there's good size, good athleticism on the football field. You know, you know, it, it's it's maybe that that this game is always the last game of the season. The players have had a long time to practice and and, and get efficient at tackling, but. We've seen some great tackling in this game over the years. So fourth down, big play here. Okay. So fourth down, it's a big little play. I'm a little bit surprised they didn't punt. And Bowler would pitch. Oh, and I'll tell you, he threw it a little quick. Wide open was Peter Roach. Peter Roach that time, and he just didn't really look for the ball. Well, and the ball was behind him a little bit, and, uh, and we'll see it here. Bowler just missed him. Threw it to his back shoulder, and it's too bad because he was open, and there wasn't good uh, cover, good good protection over the top. Roach might have had a shot at uh, breaking it, but fourth down, and now the Cougars are going to get their turn. So they they turn the ball over on downs. That's actually a big play here, because the Cougars gain about 20, 25 yards that they would have had to overcome with a punt, and instead they've got the ball at the 32. So the spy punters are putting eight guys in the box here and uh, figuring maybe the Cougars are gonna be a little gun shy after two interceptions. And they, are, they, might not, they may be a little gun shy, but when you have Josh Smith you know, rumbling and stumbling again, this Smith is 6'1", 225 pounds senior from Wilmington, Massachusetts. And he's a big boy. You know, he reminds me of the the gentleman from Bill Ricca in the playoffs, like that milk yeah, truck. Right. He kind I of forget a, his name. I don't, I don't, know I don't remember his name either. That kid was a heck of a ball player. Yeah. This kid's the big the, legs. Big legs. Yeah. Tough. Doesn't yeah. stop. You know, you got to really bring him down, or, or concentrate and bring him down, or he's not going down. 
going to be a 27 pound turkey on their table tomorrow. <laughs> oh gosh, could you imagine that grocery bill? Holy cow. <laughs> <laughs> so there's the, you, uh, and he had him. What'd oh. you see, Max? Your tip away. Sorry. No, no, so sorry. No. So, so, Max, I'll, I'll tell you something. It, you know, it, it, it's so cold down there. It, the, the, the players, it, do you see, are they, are they, are they doing anything in special on the sidelines? Do you, you see the players wearing uh, hot hands or anything like I, that? No, everyone's just dumping around, you know, trying to stay warm, trying to keep the, trying to keep loose out there. There's, I can't stand still for very long because I'm freezing up as well. These players must be freezing too, even though they're wearing a lot warmer stuff than I am. Well, Coach <laughs> Curley, and we're going to have to get a shot at Coach Curley soon. He has shorts on. Coach Curley is wearing shorts, folks. So Coach Curley is going to have to check himself in a mental institution for a uh, uh, lobotomy check after this because I don't know what he's thinking. There goes Mama. There goes that man. Riley Donovan, he stumbles and bumbles and hammers his way over the 30 to the 28. And Donovan says, not so fast. Big play by Donovan that time. Look to his right, kind of the mirror image of the, of the play earlier in the ball game where Bowler looked off the defense to the left and ran to the right. That time Donovan looked off the defense to the right and broke it to the left and, you know, scampered with a little bit, bit of speed for uh, close to 30 yards. And, you know, Donovan doesn't have the same kind of talent, natural talent at the quarterback position as Bowler, but he's every bit as competitive. This kid can play. That was a heck of a, that was a, a game-changing run right there. And, and this Donovan can play and the Smith can play. And, you know, I, I said it before, Smith just absolutely beasts his way down uh, into uh, deep into Ponder territory, you know, this five hundred. I mean, this 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 Cougar team. They may not be deep, but they got a couple of players that can play and know how to carry a load. Yeah, no question about it. And now they have the ball on uh, inside the ten yard line, so they'll have first and goal and an opportunity to take the lead here in the in the third quarter. So the the Ponders have responded with with a couple of punches. Let's see if the Cougars can can uh, punch back. It's not the it's not the inside the 10 yard line. It's what it's the 15 yard 15. line. 15. So yeah, 15 a little bit over maybe the 16. So here's Smith again over that C gap. And Rob, just real quick for those at home because we're saying A B and C gap. What do we mean by that when we say A B and C gap? A gap is between the center and the guard. B between the guard and the tackle. C outside the tackle. Uh, before the tight, but before the tight end, if the tight end's on that side. So would a, would a blueberry pie be? If, would, if you were to guess, would a blueberry pie be a gap, and then an apple pie be b gap, or? What, I, what, what I think you? that's that's what I'm that's what I'm going with, and then the uh, cherry pie is c gap. c gap. There you go. Okay, so now here's Smith again. He stumbles and bumbles and mumbles, and I'll tell you, you know, it, it just you get. You got to really concentrate and bring him down. You know, he doesn't go down easy. Simple as that. I mean, this kid's big, Max. I mean, you're, you're down field level. I mean, is this kid as big as he appears up here? Yeah. No, you, Max, you make a great point, and, you know, a professor commented, this is a big team. They're big boys out there, and it's not big boys that can't play. They can play. So second and three, and the spy ponders remain stout. That was actually that was actually third third three. That was a big play. It's going to force them into for, force them into fourth down. And we're talking about the size of the uh, Cougars and the size of uh, Smith. And they're really built as a team that that's going to run the ball down in the red zone. But the uh, spy ponders are standing them up and uh, every bit uh, making a match down there. Yeah, that time it was Gustavo Sajian. And, and Will Meyer, who kind of uh, got in there, and, and and actually was a I'm sorry, Skyler Mills got in there and said, "Enough is enough," and re remained stout and defiant. So here is a big play. This is a huge game in the ball game. Third quarter, 150 left, and fourth and six. You can run it if you want. It's the same play to the other side. They hit in the, for the touchdown. It's a pitch, and it's a catch that time. Joe Greenwood makes a key play. 
Wow, and they're going to give him the first down. Great play by Greenwood, willing his way over the line. Good recognition, knowing where the where the first down first down line was, as the uh, referee signals first down. And you know, Rob, one of the things about teams that don't have a lot of wins, especially like a one and eight club, is if you can get the team working hard and pointing in the direction, the one thing you have on your side, they're not afraid to lose. They're not in there saying, well, what happens if we lose? They know exactly what happens if they lose. But, of course, you, know, you got to get them pointed in the right direction because a lot of times when you're 1-8, you're going to say to yourself, mm, you know, maybe I, I, I don't need to, to, to try my best right here. All right, there's a nice little pump fake in there. Smith stumbling, bumbling, and mumbling into the end zone. And this Smith is a turkey gobble. Wow, big touchdown for the, the Cougars and for Smith. And let's see what oh, happens. He just, oh, he, they, oh, he got contacted oh, about the four yard line and just kept on, kept on rolling forward. That is called downhill running right there, folks. Oh, wow. He just, it, it was dinner time. Uh, it was turkey time at, at, at the Smith household. And, and Mama Smith said, come to the dinner table. And Smith took off and was not going to be denied a second helping. So the, the Cougars will go for two. It's 18-14, and a little pitch, and he can throw that if he wants. And there's Smith stumbling, bumbling, and mumbling, getting two. And so with 105 left in the third, the Cougars strike back. It's 20-14, to 14. W, O, oh, W, gobble, gobble. Great possession that time by the Cougars using their uh, using their side. That was uh, well, it was keyed by the big the big run by Donovan, which was nearly a 30 yard run. And it was, uh, you know, after the, the kind of the failed flood pass on the right, he looked to his right, ran the defense off to its right, scampered around left end for, for 30 yards. And then they just powered the ball from them there all the way into the end zone. So that was a big possession. They go, they go up 2014. This is a, this is a nail biting game. This is a great rivalry game here on Thanksgiving Eve. This is, this is a heavyweight fight. This is a rivalry game. This is everything you want in, in, in a football uh, Thanksgiving Eve turkey uh, uh, classic. And you know, Rob, uh, uh, maybe a hidden play was the big fourth down stop that gave the Cougars good 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 field possession. So there's a little squib kick. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. And that time, the spy ponders Henry Burns it falls on it. And Rob, what does uh, what does your weather app say now? How is it 33? This is it really? You think it's really 33 degrees out? Well, it's 33 degrees, and and the wind chill factor. It feels like 20 degrees. Still, uh, 24 mile an hour uh, wind out there. So, the spy ponders actually will be going against the wind for one more minute and two seconds. So, if they can get a first down here, they'll flip the field, and then they have the wind with them, which is going to unleash Bowler and add that little extra dimension. You know, I, I, I've seen some teams get, uh, I've seen some crazy stuff with win. And one of the craziest things I've seen, I saw a team empty their time, three of their timeouts here in the third quarter to make sure the team punted into the win. So it's something that certainly Coach Petrellis could decide to do, but I doubt it. Here's Bowler, a little pitch. Oh, he puts it up in the wind, and it's a little back shoulder fade. I don't know if he caught it. They're going to say out of bounds, and the ball naturally went back shoulder there for Bowler, but God, that is an awful difficult pass to attempt in this kind of win. Yeah, you know I'm a golfer, Scott, and that looked like one of those balls that uh, start, you, you hit up and is going at the flag, and then the wind gets it and ends up in the sand trap. Right, right, right. Well, in, in, my, in my case, uh, in the woods, because it was going to maybe go 40 yards, you know, straight, <laughs> and then it just faded into the woods, you know. So I, you know, I took out a nine, and I probably should have taken a three. Anyway, uh, 42 seconds left. Here's Bowler going to his left, a little pitch and a little catch that time. Oh, a nice little juke move there by Stephen to give Peter Roach, and Roach has been outstanding. 
nice play by Roach, and they he finally they finally get a skill position guy, a jitterbug in space, and Roach makes the first guy miss. Second guy doesn't miss, but nice little gain there. Clock rolls, and now the punter should let this. Yeah, they really should not run a play here. I would be shocked if they were to run a play. So 10 seconds left. Bowler should be asking the the official if he's got time to burn this out. Holy cow! They're not. They're gonna. This is interesting and they they maybe thought that the cougars didn't think they'd run a play caught them by surprise a little piece of the catch with Manini. yeah i like getting Manini involved i like getting the giveaway involved again the more physical the more physical receivers and this feels like that kind of game that's going to be uh that's going to take some physical you know yards after the catch and uh, that's what that's what Maniti brings. And we're going to go into the we're going to go into the fourth quarter with a one possession game, and the Spy Ponders with good field position, uh, you know, threatening. This is uh, this is a great way to end this end the 2018 campaign. No doubt. It's and um, Mad Max. Tell me, you know, as we see the teams huddling and and, and, and receiving strategy and, and, and advice from their coaching staff. You know, with this kind of wind down here, you know, what kind of play do you, you know, what, what are the types of plays that you think the Spy Pirates might be able to use with the wind, maybe to get an advantage on offense? Well, now they have the wind at their backs. I mean, throw those deep bombs. You saw Donovan do it earlier on that great pass to the end zone for the touchdown. He's using that wind as an advantage, throwing those deeper passes. That works. And they're using the right thing when they're on the uh, opposite side of the wind. They had those, all those hook routes, short routes. That was perfect for their uh, going against the wind. No so now they got to throw those deep bombs. Uh, no doubt. You know, Rob, I, I, I think I, 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 we haven't seen empty in the second half. And I, I mentioned at halftime that I didn't think you'd see it to the fourth quarter because I think that they're kind of holding that almost up their sleeve or in their back pocket and saying, you know, we're going to use this when we think we need a score or we could potentially lose this ball game. And, uh, you know, they haven't done it yet. They, 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 I, I, they must want Callahan in as an extra blocker. Rob, but let's keep an eye on where Callahan goes on this play if it's a pass play because I'm a little confused as to what, 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 what they need him back there for. Well, maybe this is it. Well, maybe this is it. A little jet sweep. Comes inside and he's pasted out of bounds. Gosh, they're hitting out there. That time, lay in the wood was uh, Big Griffin Carroll, the 6'3", 205-pound super swap Amua from Malden. And, you know, empty, Rob? You know, what well, do you think? Well, I, I don't know. You know, good uh, good job by Callahan powering forward for five yards. And five yards on first down through the run will set up a play-action pass. Really give uh, Bowler a lot of options here. So second and we'll call it six. And it's a little pitch and another pass batted down that time by Frank Asilieri. And Rob, we've seen a lot of passes batted down. We see when Tip Joy Pazia had an interception. The 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 the, yeah, the, the, the hogs are getting their, their paws up in the air. <laughs> the hogs are getting their paws up in the air. Or hooves. Uh, <laughs> we've got to come up with some how about their claws? The their cougars. Claw, yeah. Cougars are getting their claws yeah. up in the are air. Are their wings? Uh, they're they're no. No? Drumsticks? No. Maybe. All right. So third and five, and this will be interesting. Four down territory here, Professor. Yes. Okay. So Professor says go for it. He's been Johnny in the spot tonight. Been uh, simpatico with both coaches. Ooh, but Tyler Callahan gets met angrily that time by, holy cow, that was Ryan Brown. And I think they're going to punt that ball. What do you think, partner? Yeah. And now it's uh, now it's four done. Now they got to punt the ball. Yeah, the, the Cougars have just been outstanding tonight against the run. And this has really been a game of momentum, right? We've seen, you know, we were kind of getting into pie talk uh, about the right right before that big run uh, by Donovan, and Donovan really turned the, the momentum, and the Spy Ponders need to get it back. Zagging and zagging and zooming that time is Steven DeLeo and the Spy Ponders go back on defense and the Cougars will take over first and 10 leading 20 to 14 with 9 29 left in the contest it was cranberry sauce talk actually 
Was it? Yeah, started this way, out as cranberry yeah, sauce. Yeah, it was. It was. It was. Yeah. It was. And I put a little apple in it this year. <laughs> Did you really? Yep. Yep. Put a little apple. Cut down on the sugar. Wanted to get a little more sweet in there, so I kind of chopped up a little apple. Wow. Yep. yep. The professor doing his best, Chef Boy RD. There you go. Cooking with the professor out here. There you go. Yeah. I got to think of something. Something warm, Matt. My feet are cold. And, hot, and, uh, hot tamales? Excuse me, excuse me. Your guys' feet are cold. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I can't even feel my toes right now. So Max, you were in the you were in the booth last week yeah, against Waltham. I should have been in the booth this week. <laughs> no, that's your that's your punishment. The higher ups at ACMI said we're gonna we're gonna make Max suffer. I don't even have a camera down here. It's just me standing down here. <laughs> All right. So first. No, second, zigging and zagging and zooming is that man, uh, excuse me, um, Smith. And i tell you, this Smith is just tough stuff. Well, this is what you like to have with a six-point lead on a, on a cold, windy night with eight minutes to go. You like to have a 225 back who can eat up a few yards and keep that clock rolling. And as much as I said before, I, do, I didn't particularly like having the, the that type of back when I'm behind or right. I've lost momentum. When I've got it, holy cow, feed the bear. Feed the, the cougar. Feed the cougar. Feed the cougar. Feed the cougar. Stumble. Humbling. And now even mumbling, Josh Smith goes over the 40 to the 44. And I mean, what are we looking at? We haven't had not too many big runs. I think he's coming up on maybe 150 or maybe almost 200 yards here. This kid's yeah, he's got, a, he's got a lot of yards. He had that one, on I think one, one big big uh, run that where he, the, the kind of the double cut back for uh, for big yards. But it's been it's been four or five yards a pop. And you, you like my my comparison to the Bill Rickard. It's kind of the yeah, same thing. Exactly. And, 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 the, and it kind of wears you down. Wears also. you down. It, it, as I said, you have to really, I mean, you have to bring him down. He's not going to trip over things. He's not going to bring himself down. And this is, again, you know, we saw Waltham. This kind of happened with Waltham. That's a, that's a curious play call when, you know, you're getting a lot of positive yardage with uh, this is, uh, you know, I, I think P Coach Petrellis is an excellent, outstanding, and effective coach. But, you know, sometimes I think these coaches sometimes outthink themselves a little bit. You know, you, there isn't a law that says you, don't, you couldn't run Smith the same play literally the next till the end of the game. Right. You know, you know what I'm saying? I think right. some coaches think that, like, well, you can't really do that. Well, actually, you can do anything you want. So third, well, with the rules. So third, that's third now, right, partner? Yep. Third and ten. So he slings out this pass. This play has been effective, and that was a that's very smart. Jumping on the ball is Joe Greenwood. Partner, that's a live football. That's a live football, and uh, the uh, Cougars dodged a bullet. Last thing they want to do is to give Arlington the ball at the 40, and now, now they're going to have to kick into the wind. And uh, the, the spy punters look to get good field possession here, down one score with six minutes left to go in the ballgame. No doubt. And, 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 you know, not to belabor a point. Yeah, no doubt, Max. And, and uh, you know, not, not to belabor a point, but, you, wow, that's a, that's a. That's a dangerous throw. Dangerous throw in the second down pat. The second down play call is, right. is curious. Right. So. Right. Yeah. So here is Callahan back, and they get off a really good kick, all things considered. Actually, you know, Rob, that's a really good kick. You come into the wind like that. So the Spy Pinders take over with excellent field position. They're down 2014, 559 left. And, you know, so we got a lot of time. We got a lot more possession. Even the spy partners got to score this thing in over in, 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 in any stretch of the imagination. But this is one of those situations, you, you know, you were talking about the, the spy partners are as close to taking the lead as they are to going down big, you know. Yeah, right. Right? Right. Right? I really liked what you said a couple weeks ago, and it yeah. really put sports in a perspective. Yeah, yeah, They're yeah. as close to going to, taking the lead in the game as they are to going down big. Yeah. So... So first and ten for the Spy Ponders. Ball is on the 44. They stay in the eye. They have not gone empty, I believe, in the second half. 
Bowler rolls out, a lead pitch, and that ball kind of sailed on him. That's the, you know, Bowler's Professor, the one thing that's tough with the wind is sometimes the ball can kind of sail on you. Yeah, uh, yeah, and that's what happened there. And uh, this is a this is a big this is a big possession, obviously for the for the uh, spy punters, and to not convert uh, f first down is not what they want to see. I, I'm 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 surprised they haven't tried at least one more time to maybe get that running game going, and for especially if they are going to put Callahan in this backfield. I I I I I. I, I I haven't been able to, this is something you really, really have to study tape to fully understand. I'm, I'm just not really, this is a passing down here. He trips to the bottom of the screen. See where he goes. You use him to fake. And there, here goes Bowler zigging, zagging, and zoom. And, and again, when they need the yardage, when they have to have yardage on the ground and they can't really have an incomplete, it's Bowler with his legs. And Bowler ran through a very, very, very tight little space and uh, powered through for seven yards. That could easily, without his will, it, that could easily have been gobbled up at the line of scrimmage. But no, and that brings that that makes it a very manageable third and three, and kind of gives them more options in terms of what they can run here. And, and, and it really answers the question for me, certainly, Rob. You know, so what, what's Callahan doing? Well, that's what he's doing, right? They, they, they need to give somebody for the defense to honor on a bowler uh, uh, run option. So third, this is definitely two down territory, folks. He can run it if he wants, and there he goes. He zigs, zags, and whoa, coming from behind, really looking to rip that ball away, but coming up empty was Joe Greeny and bowler again. So the season, the most important game of the season. Go ahead, Rob. Well, I'm going to say, look at that footwork by Bowler. Unbelievable! Unbelievable! He was, he was, he broke an ankle of a defender at the 50-yard line, and uh, you know, folks, three yards, three yards to go on third down. I mean, that could be the ball game right there. And Adam Bowler, with uh, doing doing his best, Mr. Bojangles makes guys miss all over the place. Now, no doubt, Rob. You know, I, I I can't. This is one of the best football players we we've, we've ever he seen here. And I, I got to be honest, I don't know if I've ever seen a better competitor on this football field. And I've been here for over 30 years. So they can run that, and that's what he's going to do again. What they're doing now, so they got the game in the line. The spy ponders think this is the most important possession of, uh, of the game and certainly of bowler season. And they're saying that we want this kid handling the football. And with the weather conditions, you know, we just we trust him to run it. This is out, this is outstanding! Wow. You see Adam Baller, uh, yeah, I did. clapping, firing up the firing up the team. He's feeling it too. I mean, he understands I, the situation. Am I am I over over a step? I mean, this is like really impressive, right? You know, I, I mean, I, right? I, I, yeah. I mean, I mean, I because like sometimes I catch. Am, am I kind of, you know, maybe I'm a, I'm a I'm a fanboy up here, which I am a fan, but I mean, this is impressive stuff. This, Folks, I mean, uh, you know, Max, seriously, without joking, I mean, seriously, tell the folks at home, let them know, how cold is it down there? It is so cold. It is not even funny at this point. It is, it's gotten colder, I think, in this last couple of minutes. Uh, I mean, it's got to be hard to do anything out there, it's, right? Hold yeah, it's the hard football. to talk. It's hard to talk right now. That's how cold it is. I mean, Bowler is really impressed, especially when he don't have to strip the ball just now. I held on. I wouldn't have held on to that. No, he, the, Max, that's a great point. The kids come from behind, and and I'll tell you, that's only a senior with that many games experience understands that 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 that, that it's coming from behind. Let's see what they got here. So first and ten, 409 left in the contest. Spy Ponder's down six, and he's going to pitch it, and there is a tremendous strike to Callahan, who goes over. The 20 to the 15, and so Coach Gender showing me exactly why Callahan's in that backfield. I like that play call. Little Love swing, it. little swing, uh, swing pass to Callahan, and Callahan bowls to the 15, and that's just what the spy punters needed. And the 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 coaches on the sidelines are exhorting the fans in the stands. Fans are pounding their cold feet into the metal. And uh, the pot, the ponders responded. You know, bowlers running the football and throwing short passes, but the only work is they they know he can throw the ball long, like he's doing uh, right here. 
And oh. there is right on cue a, 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 a good play call, but he, he couldn't just get uh, uh, on the same page as McGillivray. But I love they going to McGillivray. I love the play call. I love the play call. Yeah, but they weren't on the same page. Bowler thought that McGillivray was uh, going to do the going to do the hook and go, and McGillivray got the hook part, but didn't swing for the go. You know, it's funny. You know, in these in these kind of conditions. There's, there, there's, I, because I, I played in a lot of cold games, and one thing I always found there's almost a phenomenon was that that the, in the cold games that there was, uh, there seemed to be more communication issues for some reason. Yeah. Why, why cold would have more communication? Uh, good, I don't know. Good point. So anyway, uh, uh, three thirty nine left. That spy ponders down six, and he puts the turf, stands up, and wow, that's a very unfortunate time to drop the pass, and Bowler gets taken down. That's going to bring up a third and about 14. And so it's four down territory here. It certainly isn't the ball game, partner, but this is getting... Uh, uh, they need... The, uh, no. Yeah, third and 14. I mean, the, the, the really, I, I think a big decision here is do you try to bite this off seven yards at a time or do you, uh, you know, try try for the first down or maybe even a touchdown and then do it again if you don't get it. I think the gutsy play call here is something that you maybe haven't run all game, a screen or a pot pass, you know, uh, but I'm expecting a bowler run. No, it's not. It's a little pitch. That swing pass. There he is. Callahan walks into the end zone on a perfect pitch and catch from bowler. Bing, bang, boom, gobble, gobble, bang, boom, gobble, gobble. Huge play by Adam Bowler and Tyler Callahan. Let's see the replay and see just what happened there. Callahan swung out of the out of the backfield and nobody was covering him. The Cougars are looking at each other with their hands raised. Who has number eight? Please tell me. Uh, fellas, nobody had number eight. Number eight's in the end zone. Great, great play by Callahan. And uh, Poor time for the for the Cougars to get their signals crossed on defense. Well, I know it may have been signals crossed, but Taylor Bowler was doing a good job of hiding. He had his shoulders pointed downfield, and then he looked at the last minute and he threw an absolute strike. The kick is up, and the kick is good. And with 2:39 left in the contest, the Spy Ponders take a 21 to 20 lead that was a huge extra point by sam swift and partner what can you say about adam bowler and tyler callahan well that was a pressure packed play that was a, that was a season right there and the elements were not uh, contributing to the success of that play and under under pressure these guys come through Huge, and then uh, 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 and then swift kick, the swift kick. Once once again, he's four for four in uh, PATs tonight, or was it three for three? I guess. Yeah. Uh, tw you know, twenty one. Not easy that's to the kick the, the ball. No, that's, that's, uh, the that's, the that's the difference in the game. That's the difference. That's the difference in the game. Period. End of yeah. story. So, and the ball falls off the tee. Now, this is kind of a, something to watch for, folks, because you know, early in the game, you don't really make, make much mind to this, but this is going to be one less person on the kickoff team that can come down and cover, and they're going to have big number 72, Ryan Heelan. He'll hold. So watch for this, folks, because this is a prime spot for the Cougars to try, and they're going to scrib it on purpose, and they're going to fall down and say thank you very much because with 237 and five timeouts, I'll tell you what can happen right now, and if I'm Coach Petrellis, I am giving – the ball to my big guy Josh Smith and I'm going four yards four yards timeout four yards five yards you know, you know timeouts and I got four of them I yep. can run him down this field probably to about the 20 or the 10 and then I probably got a couple plays to get in the end zone yep. from there we'll see and uh Adam Bowler is leading the jumping jacks on the sideline. And here he goes, and the, the, the spy ponders were Johnny in the spot there. What that was, folks, is that was a double A clap gap slant by the two tackles who caved in, if I saw that correctly, and an outstanding 
Uh, uh, what a game of chess, partner, huh? What a game of chess we got going on. I, I'm thinking that he's going to come down with Smith the whole time, and obviously the spy partners have the same thought. Yeah. You know, we don't call his name a lot. Uh, middle linebacker Big John Cassidy is doing a great job, uh, you know, plugging up the plugging up the middle and keeping Smith in front of him. Cassidy's been the, one of the team's most important players down the stretch in the second half. And out uh, flanking there is Callahan, helped by Joey Pazia. And that's a huge play, bing, bang, boom, gobble, gobble. Do they have any timeouts? Yo, they got a ton of timeouts. Why are they not that's using a, them then? That's about 100. I think they're using it right, they're <laughs> using it right here. Yeah. As we look at that play again, almost another backwards pass. Big stop for the Spy Ponders. We're going to have uh, we're going to have third and long, third and about 13 for Arlington Catholic. And they do not like this down, down and distance. They don't like it in the first quarter. They don't like it in the second quarter. They don't like it with the game on the line. No, you know, high school teams in general, even even Adam Bowler doesn't like a third and 13, although we just executed a, an outstanding one on his last drive for a touchdown. But what is impressive there, Rob, is so obviously Coach Petrellis had great success on those swing passes. He threw a touchdown in the first half on a swing pass. They had a, another huge gain there. And I, it's, a, it's a brilliant play call by Coach Petrellis. He waits till 142 left in the ball game to execute. But the spy punter sniffed it out, and you got to give him credit for that. But that's the play right there that's that's given the spy ponders fits, and it's because of Petrellis's aggressiveness and uh, just overall play calling acumen. So third and thirteen, big play here. Let's see if they try to get half of it back. Quarterback should be running this here, and he is. He's going to go nowhere. They knew it was coming. If I knew it, then they knew it. Can't throw it. Lyman are downfield. And then a beautiful pitch and catch. And I would have sworn linemen were downfield. A beautiful pitch and a catch. Outstanding to Frank Cancellori. Wow. Have we seen this before, partner? Who did this? The kid from uh, Lexington. From, from Lexington. And I, I, on the replay, I was looking. The linemen were not downfield. They were downfield. not downfield. So it was not quarterback run. They were, they were, uh, they were following the play. Sure were. So now it's the, fourth the, and a yard. It, 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 interesting, the spot is difficult to make oh, they on that give play. Them, and they, without measuring, they give him a first down, and Gendron doesn't like it. <laughs> interesting, they don't measure. So Stripes looks across and thinks that's a first down, but I think it was. So here we go. Now the tide has turned. 125 left in the ball game. The Cougars can win it with a field goal or a touchdown. Theoretically, illegal so procedure. that's going to be a legal procedure. So to be first and 15, the clock did not roll there. Our clock rolled. The clock is officially kept on the field by uh, the the officials. And look at this official. Excellent mechanics. Wow, look at Stripes. Look at Stripes march that off. Outstanding. So first and 15, Rob, you know, We've seen them just execute this. They got a little bit of serendipity last time. And you see, you see Coach Petrell is calling a timeout. Curious timeout there? Yeah, curious timeout. It's almost as if they, you know, with 117 left, you'd like to use your timeouts, uh, you know, during the drive. Maybe it gives you more options when you have timeouts to use the center of the field, run, get down, use the timeouts. And here, uh, after a penalty, with some confusion, it's just an uh, unfortunate use of a timeout for the Cougars. Well, or does he have some sort of a trick play, a double pass or something like this? Usually he needs a timeout to say, okay, guys, remember that play that we were talking about that takes a, a substitution, right? A, a quarterback playing different position. So, yeah, so you would watch for a trick play here, possibly. You know they want to get the ball inside the 20, so that Smith becomes a factor again. So it's third and 15. This is a huge play here, and whistle blows. Oh, cool. <laughs> All right. So this is like a this is like event, a the revenge of the fifteen timeouts. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Max, excellent call. Right. And this is like a long right. joke where yeah. you just are waiting for the punchline. <laughs> right. <laughs> waiting for the punchline. Right. Yeah. Uh, uh. Where's the punchline? Yeah, it's not coming. So well, so this gives us a chance to so. You wonder if 
if Gendron sees something there that Petrellis had up his sleeve, so he calls a timeout, or both of them were bluffing. You know? Well, I mean, Gendron's, the Spike Punters' timeouts are worthless to him. They don't need any more points. Yeah. Right? Make him think about it, right? Yeah. Ice them. So here's Donovan. Let's the see stand. what he's got up his sleeve. And he's going to roll. He's going to come back. He's going to try to come back. He doesn't come back. He's not able to. Wrapped up and taken down that time by Big Joey Pazia. Huge play by Pazia and the Spy Ponders. And that time, everybody came from uh, the blind side of the quarterback, and they cut off his escape route. Look at this. Two guys, and he had nowhere to go and just goes down. That play, Rob, I have a feeling that is by design. Oh, that, that's by design. Absolutely. He's going to roll left, take three steps. It's a three-step pivot, reverse pivot, and go backwards. And they had the backside pers pursuit that kept integri gap integrity, and that was impressive. So this brings up, that says third down, partner. I, I think that's fourth, no? No, it's third down. It is third down, okay, so. I love it when you talk about gap integrity. Uh, they talk slow? Yeah. All right, so here, let's see what they got now. So they, they've, they've sniffed out the reverse pivot. So it's a straight drop now, and he's in trouble. This is not his forte, and he runs out of bounds. It'll give him a fourth down. That could have been a late hit or a hit above the Probably neck. The no whistle there, or no flag, not a whistle. And so that brings up fourth in California. And the Cougars, who have fought valiantly, aggressively, uh, assertively, and astonishingly all game long, come down to one final play. It's only third down. <laughs> Sorry, it's only third down. Is it third down, partner? Yeah. I gotta get my my uh, my mental integrity going straight. So third down. I guess that's why he walked ran out of bounds. All right. So things become clear now. And sprinting out. Now he's gonna run it. He's a danger. And just runs out of bounds again. Or was that incomplete? That's the dark side of the moon over there, partner. I can't really see. Did you happen to see uh, what happened to that play? That was incomplete. Incomplete. Incomplete pass. And, I, uh, partner, I'm losing my mental integrity right uh, now. Well, I, I, I can tell you that the fans in the stands who have come out to support the Spy Ponder team are having some fun now. Spy Ponders on the sideline are going crazy, exhorting the fans, and the fans are responding, I think, maybe out of... Uh, kind of rebellion against the cold here, uh, but th this is this is what this is what, if we this is what high school here. football is all about, folks. This is it. Everyone's standing here, and fourth down. This is the ball game here for the Cougars. Here goes Donovan. He throws it up for grabs. It is incomplete. No flag, and the spy ponders. Take over on downs. Bing, bang, boom, gobble, gobble. So I got to say, that was a big play by Kanye Lynch here. Let's watch it again. Lynch has Lynch, played well. Lynch, uh, Lynch had the big interception in the first quarter, and here at the end of the game, Lynch goes up for the ball, and you know that might have been that might have been caught, but Lynch kind of willed it. Lynch also went over the back of the receiver a little bit. I thought that was a good no call. He was fighting for the ball. Both the receiver and the defensive player have a right for the ball. They sure do. And that that was a that could have gotten called. But I think it was a good no call, and, and Lynch comes up with with another fine play. Lynch was the first to act on the ball that was up in the air. That's absolutely not a call. Although I mean I wouldn't understand if they made it, but you know what, what, once Lynch acts first for that ball, he's got every right to it. He beat he squared his shoulders, went through the receiver to the ball. That's not that's a ball up for grabs, folks. Anyway, so the spy ponders will take a knee and. The clock rolls with 27 seconds left and coming to the end of a magnificent career for these seniors and specifically, partner, we've seen a special effort today by all the spy ponders, but specifically Adam Bowler.
Yeah, when the game was on the line, Bowler put the game on his shoulders and, uh, you know, ran the ball and you look at him uh, celebrating there. And that was a that was a hard fought win. They deserve to celebrate. What a way to finish your senior season. What a great what a great ball game. What a great way to uh, ring in Turkey Day and what a great way to end a, a great outstanding rivalry. 21-20 um, and uh, you know, the spy ponders come out on top. And the, uh, as the clock strikes zero, the players pour out onto the field in celebration and exuding confidence and exultation as they shake hands with the gracious players from Arlington Catholic in what is going to be the last game played in this rivalry, possibly one of the better, the best games that's ever been played between these two teams, Rob. And the difference in the end was the effort, the accuracy, and the intelligence of Adam Bowler. Yeah, no question, no question about it. Again, Bowler played a, a great game. And, uh, you know, there were a lot of, lot of contributions by a lot of players. And, um, you know, I thought the, the, uh, the, on a, on a night like tonight where it's so cold and uh, cold and windy, it took a lot of guts and a lot of courage to play. And we saw interviews before the game by the players talking about, uh, you know, the, the, what can be learned uh, by playing football and the culmination of a high school career on a, on the Arctic tundra here tonight um, in a game like this really took, takes courage on both sides of the ball. Every, every player who participated tonight uh, showed that courage. Well, Coach Gendron, I, 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 for those that in the, the Twitterverse and the, uh, any, any social media knows, I, 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 I tweet out that the, 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 the Coach Gendron uh, uh, piece today where, where he talked about uh, football being in, in, uh, in, in this day, he said, in this day and age of inclusion, football is the ultimate inclusion sport it's a, a player that it's a, it's a sport they do not cut players they do it does not discriminate uh, uh, against size or height it's a uh, it's a sport where your courage your effort and your determination can allow you to have a spot to help the team su uh, succeed and we saw and now, that yeah. when, when we saw that Throughout the year, I think, uh, Rob, you mentioned the, the, the middle linebacker uh, who Coach also mentioned in his Sean interview. Cassidy. Sean Cassidy. This is a player who up to this year, we was, I was talking to, uh, in the interview last night, Coach was saying this is a player that, had, that they, couldn't, they couldn't find a role on the team. But uh, an injury for a player, he steps in, doesn't step off the football field until they've won four out of five. Yeah, plays in, played an outstanding game tonight, really helped control uh, the running game, keep plays in front of them at all time. Um, very impressed, impressed by by Cassidy. And here we have a, a ceremony that is a somewhat uh, special way and unique, to, a unique way to end this rivalry. Uh, you want to you want to talk about it? Scott? Sure. I, and I, I don't know if we're going to have audio. And there, as you see, Coach Clivio there, who's been a big part of this uh, tradition, that's going to be coming to an end this year. As you see. The ADs from both sides, that's Dan Shine for Arlington Catholic and Arlington High's uh, um, Stanley Vieira, uh, first year AD. And what they're going to do is each team uh, picks the MVP from the other team, and the award is presented that way. A unique and, uh, uh, I think, a sportsmanship type way to do it. Well, it should be no surprise who the Cougars uh, pick. I, I would think we'll see what their what their their choice is, and um, who would you say would be your players of the game? You know, I, I, if it's not Adam Bowler, I mean, you know, sometimes the players might have a, a different opinion on, as to uh, who did the most damage out there. And uh, you know, for the for, for, for Arlington Catholic, I, I I think you could have a few choices, but certainly either Donovan or Smith would be excellent choices. So the Spy Ponders take the trophy right there. And Rob, so what's, and, and you, you had the record of, of, of uh, see how much, uh, 
<laughs> preparation agent for the broadcast. Well, I think it's seven and five. Yeah, I think the spy right. punters are, uh, have, have kind of won this, and uh, we've been saying that this is the last game of this rivalry. After this, the spy punters will move on and play Waltham right. on, and on Thanksgiving. And Thanksgiving next year will be here. The first one will be here. So the, as far as that goes for your plans for Thanksgiving, next year they will play on Thanksgiving, and the game will take place here at Pierce Field, and then it'll be two years from now where for the first time since a long time since they've played Somerville that they will, the Spy Ponders for Thanksgiving, we will all travel somewhere, whether, you know, hopefully uh, we will be able to broadcast that, but that's way in the future. And so, so Rob, you know, I mean, what do you think for uh, players of the game? Well, I think they've called it, and it looks like Adam Bowler, and uh, it looks like Josh Smith. Josh Smith. You know, I, I think those are excellent chances. And, and, and they're, they're Dan Shine has some, some nice things to say uh, to Adam Bowler. And, you know, Rob, I, I, while we have a minute, we see these two outstanding players because Smith was, was just an absolute uh, beast out there, uh, a, 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 a human wrecking ball. He gave outstanding effort, energy, and execution. But, partner, you know, I asked in, during the broadcast if I was talking hyperbole or exaggeration. You know, so I'm going to ask you just, you know, where do you see Bowler as kind of a competitor? I, you know, I certainly, you know, he's one of the better athletic and, 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 and skilled quarterbacks, but I'm not sure we've seen this type of competitiveness and, 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 and determination. Well, since uh, since I've been covering games with you, Scott, we've seen some very fine quarterbacks oh, we have. for the Spy Ponders starting. Uh, you know, I'd start with F Frank Roach, who was a, a two-year starter, two-and-a-half-year starter. All scholastic. All, all, all scholastic, Frank, Frank Roach. Went to Tufts. He went to Tufts and, and played wide receiver at, at, yep. at Tufts. He could uh, he could run the f run the football. Let's talk about something. Then we saw Alec Coleman. Out. Who was maybe the best. Uh, Maybe, uh, and and he was a three-year. Was he a three-year starter or two-year two. starter? Two. He was a two-year yeah. starter. He moved on to Springfield, playing football in Springfield. Western New England. Western New Western England. Western New England. Yep. Located in Springfield. They, he, they, they, he, his team played Cur uh, Cully Currens for the championship, and Cully Currens was victorious. Aha, uh -huh. so. aha, uh -huh. and he's having great success he's now. At amazing the college level. success. He was the play was the player of the year for in his conference, and he was the the, the MVP for his team. And and uh, now we see uh, we see Adam Bullock. How would you co co uh, compare these? How would you compare these guys? I would say that Roach uh, was more of a runner. We like to compare him to to Marcus Allen. Right. Um, he didn't have the arm of a Coleman or a uh, or a bowler. I would say that uh, you know bowl, bowler has probably the best arm of the three. I mean, in and terms the of ability to be, the more traditional drop back, uh, ability to be a drop back passer, pro style arm, can throw the ball deep, can throw the ball now to all all quadrants of the field, can throw it to his left, can, tr can throw it to his right. Uh, we saw how he can pull the ball down and run. Coleman is a runner though. He had, uh, he had another gear, Ele right? Electricity, elusivity oh, that was special. Sick. And, 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 and game changing, he yeah. Could, you know, speedy game change. Uh, bowler is more methodical game change. But I tell you, if I'm a if I'm a, a, a college coach, yep. at the Division three, Division two level, mm -hmm. and I've seen a little bit of that football, I, I'm 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 drooling. I am begging. Uh, Adam Bowler to come play for my team. He projects out as a, as a junior, as a senior, as a, as a, uh, as a quarterback that can lead your team, capital L, to a uh, conference championship. It Tufts comes right to mind in in that vein. Your your Tufts, uh, what's the school? Wesleyan comes to mind. Yep. You know that type of school. You know those Tr are Trinity. Trinity. That's Rose. Is it Trinity? Yep. Having an outstanding career. I mean, this has been a lot of great players here. But, uh, you know, those places would be, I mean, it would be a great fit. He would be good for them, and they would be good for him. I know he wants to play baseball, too. He wants to play two sports. That's the type of kid th that he is. And you know, I know you're, sh you're shaking your yeah. head that that's going to be because that's a, 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 a tough task. It's a tough task. Well, you know, at that level, uh, being an athlete is a great is a great uh, college experience. And 
at, th at that level, at that kind of school, I mean, it's the kind of place that the coaches will have the flexibility to let you do that. You get to higher levels, and the coaches want you to commit. And uh, so it'll be uh, it'll be interesting to see what what he does. But he definitely has a future, and we understand he's a good student, also. Yes. So, so that will expand his options, and uh, this will be a, a career to watch at the next level. It sure will. So you know, so we. But this wasn't just the Adam Bowler show, and, and so I, I want to. Pivot uh, again. And you were the one that, that that really called him out. You called out the tip ball from the, the the line again was outstanding. But it's the senior leadership on both lines that's been outstanding. You know, all year long. Tonight was no exception. They're players that go both ways. Skyler Mills. We talked to him last night, but it's been consistent, outstanding, and improving play all year long. Yeah, I mean, and and. The Spy Ponders came down and they won four out of their last five football games. And uh, that speaks to this theme of, of uh, you know, improvement. I'd say earlier in the season and during league play, a theme, the theme that Coach Jenner was, uh, was, was talking about was, hey, we just got worn down. You know, we just got we we just got worn down. It's not a big club in terms of numbers. They and, play. And, and, and you talked a lot. You you point. You were ahead of the game on that because you were pointing out to me, and I wasn't quite understanding what you were saying. Why well, is what you're saying? I wasn't like quite yeah. seeing it. But you were in hindsight, you were right. Yeah. So well, I. Um, I, I think so, and that cranberry sauce tomorrow is going to be <laughs> is going to be special because I can make cranberry sauce too with uh, uh, apple. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I, I with apple exactly. So, uh, but I, you know, I was going to say, the 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 seniors led the led the way and uh, played tough early, kept a positive attitude kept this team going forward to a place where they can win the last four out of five and let some of the younger guys uh, grow and develop. I think of a Charles of a, a Charles Gillis. I tell you that on on um, on special teams, we saw some I'm looking at the names tonight. We saw some uh, plays from some sophomores uh, today. Adam Lee, General on, Lee, uh, General Lee on uh, on uh, kick. On, on kick coverage, Aiden Woog McGinty with a big tackle on uh, kick coverage. So the whole team kind of stepped up and joined the seniors. And by the end of the year, this was a really strong, outstanding football team and able to beat uh, a very game Cougar team here on Pierce Field on Thanksgiving Eve. And and it goes to show you as we see the the, 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 the Cougars. And so why don't we just actually, well, well it's perfect time to pivot right to them. Uh, certainly uh, an insp inspiring effort by them. I thought they didn't quit. I thought they uh, demonstrated poise, uh, uh, effort, execution, the whole package. Yeah, I mean, if you're a coach, Coach Petralis, th this game was about the best thing that can happen to you because you're trying to turn around your program and you've had a little bit of a rebuilding year and you want to go into the offseason on an up note. And if a loss can be an up note, this is it. I mean, and, and 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 so what do you what do you need? You need a snapback season. You need motivated players. You need guys that are hungry to hit the weight room in the off season, hungry to to uh, uh, stay disciplined and focused and do their schoolwork and not get sidetracked. And uh, you need to s something to talk about incoming prospective players. And I noticed that Coach Petralis has a lot of a very large freshman class on yeah. this team. So these freshmen get the get the kind of the bitter taste of a, of a losing record but the taste of what might be here on Thanksgiving Eve playing an outstanding game against the spy punters will motivate all offseason long no doubt and, and and what does it also tell those freshmen it tells them that because we, here we sit here we know we know that was outstanding effort right coach Patel's knows outstanding effort those freshmen know it's outstanding effort and those freshmen know that the effort wasn't good enough to win Right, right. Good so, point. okay. Yeah. So you sit Great there and point. say, okay. So that was that wasn't even good enough to win. These players are killing themselves out here. They're 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 they're, they're giving their bodies up in freezing weather to try to win a football game, and that's not enough. So it just goes to show you, and, and that also just goes to show you what it takes to win a football game. And then, and you look over, and and uh, and Arlington ends with four four out of five, and and. 
novices or 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 those that just just watch Sports Center and and only only focus on championship teams, they say, well, that's not a very good season. But people that are intelligent and and open minded and and honest to to, to look at improvement, no, otherwise, this is a special season. That was a great season. I mean, but from a couple of standpoints, so the Liberty Division was on an up note this year. I mean, there were a lot of strong teams. Winchester had its best team in in as long as I can remember, and probably nearly a decade. Belmont had an up year. Belmont was a playoff team. Uh, I can't remember saying that before. Reading, uh, as always, was a power. Woburn was powerful. This was a this was a strong conference. So and they're and they're at a, at a league game is playing tomorrow night in in, in Foxborough. In the Super Bowl, Super Bowl, right? Stoneham's in the Super Bowl. Are you so, kidding me? So this this five this five hundred record. So I personally love five hundred teams. You know, games me are too. close. You might win, you might lose. It's all about how you execute, right? Um, this five hundred record was a little bit misleading due to the quality of opponents that they play. Yeah. It, 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 it was Gendron. It, you, you felt for Coach Gendron up here, and we're hoping that what we're waiting for here and why, why we're la, 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 ta talking <laughs> on and on, how we're about to exchange recipes up here, is we're hoping to get Coach Gendron, who's, who's obviously celebrating with his team uh, an outstanding season. We'd like to have him talk. Maybe even a couple of players will come up here and talk to us. Um, but, you know, Rob, it, it, it's, it's it, you know, Coach Gendron – and he didn't even say this uh, to, to us, uh, you know, in, in private. This wasn't something he shared in private. But I could feel, you know, when that schedule was Division One, Division One, Division One team, that he was saying to himself, "Wow, I, I, I'm losing players here. I'm playing schools that are that are twice my size. We're competing, but we're getting we're we're, we're getting depleted here." Somebody, you know, help! This isn't this isn't <laughs> quite fair. And but but nobody likes somebody that stands up and says things aren't fair, right? right, right but right. You, but you felt for him because the guy sitting there, what's he got to do, you know? But it, but again, we also see again. We mentioned this before: the value of the new playoff system, which again we were very skeptical about at first. But I think this is Exhibit A of its value. Yeah, no, 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 no doubt. question, no, no doubt. And uh, as as we wait here for uh, Coach Gendron and uh, Je, you know Jen Litchfield, our our, our booth producer is uh, going down to to grab him. And on a cold night, I think that would probably be, not be all that difficult. Um, let's also let's also talk. Speaking of execution and improvement, about the ACMI staff this year, we uh, we we took we took steps forward with this broadcast. Uh, we now have a broadcast that's driven back at the studio, okay? So we've got a, uh, a pipe from our broadcast booth uh, back and, to the and studio. And that wasn't easy. Where all that the, that was a complicated is. process yeah. that took lots of planning and, you know, lots of development. And the reason it was done was that, that we, have, we have young volunteers here who had made such strides that we wanted to make sure that we were able to provide them with the type of a broadcast and a broadcast experience that was special. All right, so so and, we're going to transition well, out, and here come the here, oh, here come the players. All right, bing, bang, boom. All right, so Skylar, why don't you step up first? All right, so we're going to speak to <laughs> let poor Rob out of here. All right, so uh, whose helmet is this? Is it yours? There you go, buddy. All right, Scott, have a seat right here because we are on the air live. And yeah, we're live right now. And uh, welcome to the post game show. Uh, I'm Scott Zwick. I'm here with Skyler Mills. And Skyler, it was a tough, hard fought game. We talked a couple of days ago about playing in the trenches. Tell me what it was like out there in those trenches. Oh, man. It was not easy at all. It was a fight every play. Anything that we could do to get an advantage, that's what we were doing. We were fighting hard every play. Every play. How does it feel to, 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 oh, to win your last game? It feels amazing. I couldn't have asked for a better group of guys to do it with. It's, it's unreal. I have no words, honestly. Awesome. Well, I have some words for you. Happy Thanksgiving. Congratulations on a super career. And bing, bang, boom. All right, who's next? Who's stepping up? Hand it off, uh, M Mr. Mills. All right, who do we got here? Tim Mazzy. It's all messed up, but all right. 
Tim Mazzy's coming in here. Big 69. Yeah, you just got to flip. There you go, buddy. Just like that. There you go. Tim Mazzy. Congratulations on a big win, Tim. Tell us a little bit about what practice was like leading up to this big game. Uh, practice every week, every day, high intensity. Come out each day, everyone's fighting. What else, you need? What else can you say? Uh, what, what can you say? Well, you can say bing, bang, boom. You can say outstanding game. What were you thinking there when, when you had the big third down, and I think it was 12 or 13 at that point? What's going through your mind? We got to score. Got to score. Big play. Got to build off it. Got to get six. And you got six. Outstanding game. Tremendous career. Bing, bang, boom. And happy Thanksgiving to you. Thank you. I appreciate uh, it. All too. right. Who's next up here? All right. We got coming in here is Rob's main man, Stephen McGivory. All right. Welcome, Stephen. Uh, happy Thanksgiving to you. Thanksgiving. And, Stephen, tell us a little bit about, we've watched you all year long, your physicality after you catch the ball. What's your thought process after you make a catch and you're, you're, you're initiating contact? Um, just get the extra yards. Get get the extra, like, five to eight yards at every play. Punish? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You know, we saw we saw a, you know, a couple of forearms yep. in there. And, you know, you, you, you play hard, you work hard. Tell us a little bit about what you're going to miss most about this team. I'm going to miss all these guys. My grade. I've been playing with them since I was Pop Warner. Pop Warner, seventh grade. Seventh yeah, grade? Yeah. What team? Uh, oh, the Arlington team. Arlington Pop Warner, Arlington Pop this, Warner yeah. team. So it's been a long time coming. It culminates in a huge win. Congratulations. Thank Bing, you. bang, boom. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. All right. Who's next? All right. There he is. Peter Roach. Have a seat, Mr. Roach. All right, you were hunting some cougar out there, huh? Yes, yes. That Abs was the goal. That was the goal. So tell us a little bit about what it was like in this type of weather to catch a, a an Adam Bowler fastball down the middle. Um, you know, when you're in the game and the ball's being thrown to you, you don't feel anything else. You just see the ball, and you catch it. You don't really feel anything else. I mean, right now, my hands are pretty cold. Yeah. <laughs> but during the game, during the game, I don't feel anything. You don't feel anything. Tell me a little bit about some of the things. I know you call plays in the huddle, but on that last drive, was anyone saying anything in the huddle, you know, exhorting people on it? Was there any talk at all? Tell me what yeah. that was like. Um, Really just... This is our last ride. We need to score now. We need it to. We need it to be this drive. Basically, every play in the huddle. We. It's our senior year. We need to score this drive. And you did. You came out on top. Bing bang boom. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. All right, buddy. All right, who's next? Big Adam Bowler. All right. Congratulations, Adam Bowler. Thank Big you. Uh, happy Thanksgiving to you. I want to know, so that last drive, well, first of all, I want to know, early in the game, they stopped you running better than any team had all season long, and there was one play, I'm going to be honest, and you'll see in the broadcast, I said you looked tentative, and after that play, you really stepped up your effort and execution. Tell me what it was like to have a slow start, and then what the process, mind process was to have success. Yeah, I definitely think we started off playing a little tentative. I think I was like I was being indecisive on some of the runs, like you said, and that's just like such a key when it like when it comes to running or even passing. You just got to make a decision, be confident in it, and just go with it. Okay, and you did go with it. We were really impressed again with you know you you have a lot of athleticism, but it's the determination you, you showed. Talk to us a little bit about that last drive. And what your thought process was as you ran out in the football field, what are you thinking? Are you thinking about the specific play? Or are you thinking, okay, we've got to get into the end zone? What's your thought? What's going through your head? Well, I'm just thinking about every specific play. I'm thinking about, like, what's going to work, like what, like what me and Coach are going to talk about on the sideline, like, like in terms of what we want to run. Um, I mean, I know we have to get into the end zone. I know that was going to be it. So that definitely added a little, like a little mojo to us, I'd say. But um, at that point, you just have to focus on the individual play. 
Okay, so you know what I want you to do right now? Call the play to me. In the, what, what's the name of that play that, that the touchdown was? Do we know it? It was Trey left, 78-22, H-wheel, Y-max. There you go. I, I couldn't even repeat that if I had to. Let's go, baby. <laughs> All right. Congratulations on a big win and an outstanding career. Bing, bang, boom, and happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. All right. Who's next? There he is, my man, Joe E. Pazia. All right. Finally, I get to meet you. you I thought you were coming to the, the, the studio the other day. You yeah. didn't. Did you lose your tooth tonight? No, this was a long time ago. Long that time ago. Basketball season. Oh, outstanding. <laughs> it, it fits you. Yeah. Tell me about the big play. You, 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 you get a hand up. And the ball's coming down. What are you thinking? Uh, when it first, I saw the tackle come out, and I just was like, I'm going to put my hand up. And I felt it go up, so I was, it has to be somewhere. So it came down in my hands. I was like, I'm getting out of bounds. I'm not running this. I'm not fumbling it. So uh, big turnover, big drive. We scored it, punched it in, get six, and we kept the momentum going. Now tell me a little bit about um, the, the, the the player, the outstanding player, the player of the game. Um, Oh, what I keep forgetting is it Josh Smith. Josh Smith. Tell me a little bit about this player. This uh, is a tough kid. Yeah, he was a big boy. Uh, we've been playing him since freshman year. He's always been that size. He's always been a hard runner, and it's been tough to tackle him. But once you get 11 hats of football, he's not going anywhere. No, he's not going anywhere. And he did a great job of, uh, of, of staying with plays, gap integrity. I was really impressed all year long. You're one of my favorite players I've ever seen at Waltham. You know I like your brother, and I, uh, I'm I'm really happy with how you finished your career. I'm proud of you. Bing bang boom, happy Thank Thanksgiving. You. All right, who's next? Who is, this is? Oh, Sam Swift. There he is, the Swift kick. All right, have a seat. All right, we're with Sam Swift. We are live, uh, pre uh, the night before Thanksgiving, Arlington High. With a 21-20 win, Sam, three extra points, three for three, 21 to 20. Doesn't take a math major to know that those were three big kicks. Tell me about the kicks. Yeah, so we uh, we talked about valuing those points because we knew that that was going to be huge. With the win, there's going to be a low-scoring game. We needed to do everything perfectly with the kicks to get them through, especially with the win. And I got to give my credit to my line. Peter Roach has been awesome holding the ball all year. And... I can't do it without them. They have to do it too. So, tell me about what you do. You have a, a a mental process you go through before a big kick. Is it the same for every kick? What's going through your mind? Yeah. So you'll see for every kick, I give Peter a fist bump and I say every every time, all day, all day, sort of instilling confidence in him, giving confidence to me, and uh, it's just like a routine, you know. Are you, are you gonna miss playing with these guys? Oh yeah, I've been playing with these guys like Steve said since seventh grade, and this is my last football game ever, and I wouldn't want to go out any other way. No, and, and you should be so proud. You fought so hard. You got a big win. You showed improvement all year long. You always came up in the clutch. You Thank came you. through when it counted, and you got the big win. Happy Thanksgiving to you, you and your family. Big bang boom. Thank you. Thank all you. right, great job. All right, and here is Coach Gendron. Have a seat. And we're here at the postgame show with Coach Gendron. Coach. All right. Congrat. Congr there you go. All right. All right we're, we're not here to get pretty. We're here to Whoa. get the job done, That's baby. Right. All right. So, Coach, congratulations on a, a, a great win but more importantly, we talked about it all season long, how a, a, a season of improvement can be special, even if a record isn't a championship, and yeah. this is one of those, isn't oh, it? Oh, man, what a lot of ups and downs, and AC played so well, you know. Man, they were ready to go, and Coach Petrellis had all kinds of tricks. I don't know, he's must be some kind of defensive mastermind. I don't know if you saw, they were doing some interesting stuff that was hard to figure out, and kids are playing hard uh you know that first half they had the mojo they, they were rolling and we went into halftime we were fortunate to get those points that we did we went to halftime and you know we talked all week about the underclass and playing for the seniors and making sure they send them off the right way and then we flipped the script at, at halftime we said no seniors now it's time for you guys <laughs> right. to take over yeah uh and i really challenged them and i feel like as you watch what happened in that second half it was senior after senior after senior after senior taking control, uh, and that was fantastic to see. 
And so we, we see in the second half that, I mean, it's, it, it's like, it's almost like the, that, that last drive was like the drive and then the stop in the other way was like almost like a final exam, right? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Okay, so what you know, de, de, you know, sh uh, show what you've learned and show your work, yeah. right? And not only a final exam, you know, a final exam where there was stuff on the exam that we didn't study for because we saw AC play Cambridge, another spread team, and they were very much a 3 4 team. Uh, and then they played us a little differently than they did. So, uh, Credit to the kids for, you know, we kind of changed our game plan and changed how we call stuff, and they did it on the fly, you know, because they've worked so hard to learn and really understand their concepts. Uh, so, you know, man, what a good football game. It was outstanding. Another, all you guys do is slobber knockers. All you do is hit and hit and hit and hit, and so is the other team. They come over, everybody on that side hits. Yeah. I don't know what it yeah. is, but uh, so – Tell me a little bit ab about – let's talk a little bit about AC. Yeah. I mean, the Smith, what a bruising back. Oh, yeah. I mean, this was the, the kid from Bill Ricca all over again. Yeah. Oh, man. And I would love to kind of play it back and figure out his yards from contact because, you know, he was hit it, at the line of scrimmage or in the backfield, and he just got his feet running and, you know, kept plowing forward. Uh, you, you love seeing guys who run like that. And, you know, you don't always see big guys like that break it, but he had some long ones. So we had our hands full with him. Uh, the QB was able to sling it around. They hit some of those screens and floods. and it, Man, we had our hands full. Um, so that's a good team. They're moving in the right direction. Coach Pachelis really doing a nice job over there. I, no, no doubt. And, and so – so this season, now just, you know, talk about your, your seniors. I mean, you know, we saw Sam Swift with tears in his eyes at, yeah, at the end and how special this is for, for this team to get a win like that. Yeah, I mean, it, it brings tears to my eyes, you know. Like, these guys were fresh when I got here, uh, and they didn't know what a read option was or what 70s protection was, and now you heard Bowler rattle off a play. You know, it, it, these guys are adjusting at the line. Our second touchdown, we have one play on, and they looked back to me like, are you kidding? We're not going to run this against this defense. So we changed that at the line, and that was that touchdown to Oh, Leah. yes, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. you know, so, like, the kids, man, they've learned so much. And <laughs> Is that what all, happened? Yeah, that's what happened, and they're all in on it. Uh, they put so much into this year-round. You know, a lot of these guys are working out after basketball or after baseball, uh, and I think that's why you see the emotion pour out. Uh, you know, they, they really feel like they won by one point and all that stuff added up to, to being enough to earn it. And and so you, certainly a scoreboard, uh, you know, uh, reflects what happened. But I'd be hypocritical if we were to sit here after, you know, some of those other games and say, well, maybe the scoreboard doesn't reflect uh, uh, progress. But I'll tell you something, you know, scoreboard does reflect. Certainly that's how you judge. Mm. But, you know, so everybody's standing up. The whole place, the players. I don't know. You might have been coaching. You have to see it on on, on, on the replay. Yeah. The, the all, all the crowd seeing up. You're, the players in the sideline are jumping up and down that big fourth down play. Yeah. The atmosphere here is electric. The place is rocking. It's it, rocking. It, it's the best. Uh, and I mean, this. I don't care about the date and the time. This was a Thanksgiving football game. You know, you had two teams that loved it. Coaching staff, cheerleaders, ton of fans. Pierce Field. I mean, that was Thanksgiving football at its finest. Absolutely. So, Coach, I'm going to let you go because I know everybody wants to get home, start uh, brining that turkey or whatever we're going to yeah, do tonight. Yeah. But we're going to be able to sleep in tomorrow, and that will be nice for everybody. But congratulations on a great season. Uh, you know you know, I love your message of positivity. Uh, to, me, to me, this team embodies everything that this is, this is supposed to be all about, why this is done, and the positive aspects of it. So congratulations to you. Have a great Thanksgiving, and bing, bang, boom. Thank you. You too. And thanks to all you ACMI guys for sticking it out with us, staying late to interview the kids in the cold. You know, uh, there are a lot of people who can't get here uh, for different reasons. And so for you all to be able to bring the game to them, that's special. And that's what makes uh, ACMI a big deal in Arlington. So thank you, guys. And thank you, Coach. All right, awesome. So happy Thanksgiving. All right, awesome. So that's going to do it for us here. And let's get uh, the professor in here to just uh, 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 t take us out of here. And so, you know, we're going we're gonna to get everybody out of here. Everyone's fro frozen cold. And, uh, but I do have to take a, a little bit of time to acknowledge our 
wonderful staff here. I know, I, you know, I want Rob to be here just so that, you know, we're doing this together. And so that this staff knows what they mean to us, what they've done here for ACMI, what they've done here for my love of broadcasting and what we do here. It'll never be forgotten. It's been meaningful in my life and meaningful to the people around here. And it's, it's Andrew Wilson, Felix Moisson, um, uh, Sam Staty, uh, Staz Madrinsky, um, uh, Colin Gilbert, uh, uh, Connor Lorenzo, uh, of course, you know, Jeff Monroe, Jeff and Jeff and me, uh, uh started this Jen Litchfield. Jen has been here th this year has just been outstanding and, and super sensational. Jeff and me, we were the first two that started this program years and years and years ago. Alex Van Thong is is just a, a, a world class talent that's uh, you know bigger than you than than this place, but he's here to to make a difference and help people. And you know, partner, you know, I just want to wish you a happy Thanksgiving, and I I, I know you feel the same way I do about this crew. The crew has done a great job uh, all year long, and uh, it's been outstanding working with them. And certainly uh, there's room for more on the team. Anybody wants to get involved, come down, join these fo football broadcasts. A lot of uh, high tech going on now, a uh, lot, of, lot of professionalism, and uh, these guys embodied it. And it's been just super fun working with them. It has. And, you know, at this point, you know, we started, me and Jeff Monroe years ago, we started with literally a microphone that, that, that me and, and, and Jim Hayes, hi, Jim Hayes out there in North Carolina, uh, that me and, and Jim Hayes passed back in between the two of us. And now, I mean, this is this is as, as professional, world-class uh, equipment and uh, facilities as, as, as you're going to find anywhere. So if you want to learn how to be the best or to learn how to do any form of broadcasting from what we do, you can come do what we do or you can come learn to do anything. I mean, Colin was my right hand. I remember him sitting here doing the stats years ago, and, you know, he was a, a little starry-eyed guy. And now look at him. He's over there in charge. He's a, a BMOC, or he's going to be a BMOC. Well, he's a BMOC here. He'll be a BMOC other places. Anyway, so that's going to be it for us uh, us here. So for uh, uh, Max uh, Cohen, for my, my partner Rob Anthony, uh, I'm Scott Zwick, wishing you and yours a happy Thanksgiving. We're going to be back real soon for girls and boys basketball. We're mostly uh, with, with, with the girls this year. We're super excited about that. So come back. Join us uh, this winter. Have a, have a happy Thanksgiving and bing and bang and a boom. Gobble, gobble.